<clears throat> well, good evening, everyone. My name is Luis de Verispedia. I serve as chair of the Historic Districts Commission in Concord. Welcome to the January 26, 2023 meeting of the Town of Concord Historic Districts Commission. The Commission will review four new applications, one continuance, and at the end will conduct other businesses. We're conducting this meeting online in accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Executive Order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The public may access this call through both telephone and video conferencing. Members of the public will have an opportunity to ask questions and provide public comments on applications and discussions following the petitioner's presentation and questions from the commission. To do so, please raise your hand in the participant function of the Zoom meeting platform. If you are calling in and cannot use the platform, you may raise your hand by dialing start nine. Our host will mute microphones of those not speaking to preserve the bandwidth and may need to turn off video, except for the commissioners, the host and the current applicant. I will call on each commissioner for comments on an application and then open the meeting for public comment. Once there are no more public comments, I will ask for a motion from the commission to continue, to approve, to approve with conditions or to reject a second and conduct a roll call vote. Once the commission has acted on an application, the applicant is free to leave the meeting. Before I make a roll call, I want to welcome uh, Walter Clay and William Hewitt as associate members nominated by the Planning Board and the Concord Museum. And Catherine Mass, a former associate member who from now on will serve as full member as the Concord Public Library nominee. I also want to acknowledge uh, Timothy Whiting and uh, Kate Schartener, whose appointments as associate and full member nominated by the Concord Museum are expected from the select board after their next meeting in February. Uh, I will do now a roll call of the members of the commission. Uh, Kate. Here. Uh, Walton Clay. Here. Dennis Fiore. Here. Catherine Mast. Here. Henry Moss. Here. Melinda Shumway. Here. Uh, is Paul Ware here? Paul is not yet here. And I understand that uh, William Hewitt uh, will not be here. And I am here. The voting members uh, for this evening will be uh, Mrs. Chartner, Mrs. Mast, Mrs. Shumway, uh, Mr. Fiore and myself for the application of uh, um, 37 Lexington Road. Uh, Ms. Chartner will recuse herself and then uh, I will ask uh, uh, Henry Moss to take her place during that uh, application. So the first application we have on the list is John Peterson, 24 Walden Street, the Main Street Historic District, to install new signage. Is Mr. Peterson here? I am, sir. How are you doing? Very well. Uh, let me find you. There are so many people. <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, let me see oh, that's, no, there you John are. P. No. Yeah, John we P. Metro sign. Also, I have a um, the owner of Fiorella's was hoping to join. Uh, he is Ramon Carrion. Hey, welcome to the meeting, uh, you both. If, uh, I understand that you want to make some changes to the sign of Fiorella. So if you can present very quickly uh, what you're planning to do. Sure, we're just trying to re remove and dispose of the existing wall sign they have. Um, they have some new branding that they want to go with. So we just want to insta install some new dimensional letters um, on the current facade that they have there. Um, and also, they have an existing uh, projecting sign that we want to replace and just um, put a new one up there as well with, with their new branding. And as you can see, there's the pictures of them right there. They're just going from the um, cursor writing to the, um, no, the, the, the writing right there. Um, yeah, it's sort of a capital antique letters. 
Correct. Yes. I was trying to think of the <laughs> correct term for that font. <clears throat> okay. Just a, just a couple of quick questions from a technical standpoint. You, you want to change the blade that it's in location two. Is that correct? Uh, what, uh, what we're saying? The yeah. Correct. The, yeah, the current blade that is there now. Yes, they just they want to replace okay. that with what uh, we have proposed there. Okay, and you're going to go from a thirty inch diameter to a forty two inch diameter in the blade itself. So it will be protruding a little further out of the uh, uh, that what the current yeah sign not too much. Does. It won't be too much further. The um, the older one kind of extended out, but those those brackets are a little longer. And this one's kind of closer to the wall as it is. Oh, that's so I true. Think the, uh, I think the projection on it's only about, um, let me see, I get the old one here with that. Yeah, I think it's about like eight or nine inches, maybe more, that old stick out. Okay. Okay, correct. anything yeah, else you want? Correct. Any, anything else you want us to know about design? Uh, this, my, um, the owner of Fiorella's was also in the waiting room here, Ramon. He might have something to input on that. Hi, yes, this is uh, Ramon, how are you? Thank you for taking uh, the time to hear us. So yeah, it's pretty straightforward. We rebranded a few years ago and just finally catching up with um, a client to change the actual signage. We've done this at all of our locations and I think it just it really um, adds a nice, you know, touch to the building and it's more legible than the previous one as well. Just um, so, but it's very subtle and, and I think it goes well with our, with our facade. Okay, could you mention quickly the materials that are going to be used, whether it's gonna be metal, plastic or wood? I believe it's in a, um, it, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not metal or wood, it's a um, composite, I believe. Or I, I don't know the exact, um, I, think, I don't know if it's on there on that sheet, I don't have that in front of me. Yeah, I'm sorry, remote up. I could step in here, I'm sorry about that. Thank yeah, you. it will be like a fabric, it will be a fabricated aluminum. Okay, so the material is fabricated aluminum. Correct, okay. yeah, we painted. Okay, um, I'll ask the members of the commission for comments, uh, Melinda. Okay, so it is definitely more legible, that I give you. And I think you could use a little more legible. <laughs> Anyways, you know what I'm saying. Um, so, but it does seem a trifle large, not so much on the blade sign, but, um, that's going to cover, I don't, I, it's hard for me to know what the width of the name of the restaurant is going to be now above the door is that it, it almost looks like it could be two feet long, three feet long. I, I mean, it's big. Yeah. The facade there is 12 feet long that they have yeah. on the uh, front of the front window there. Yeah, so it's like eight feet across there then, huh? Um, yeah, I, I believe it was 90, I think it was 96 inches across there. Um, Would you say it's feet? Correct, uh, eight feet, yeah. Yeah, uh, to me, you, I, you have yet to hear from everybody else. To me, that's a little larger than it needs to be. Um, and I, so, I'll let everyone else weigh in, but I think it's a little strong. Okay, that's all. Okay, th thank you very much, Melinda. Henry. I'm, I'm not bothered by the, uh, the effect that this would have on what you see of the street or the facade of the former firehouse. Uh, thank you, uh, Henry. Uh, Catherine? Um, I, I personally prefer the, the older cursive <laughs> writing <laughs> I mean, it's a little more graceful, but, um, I do understand the need for, for, you know, a more visible sign, um, that, you know, uh, is, is just easier to, to read and to see from the street. So I, ha I have no real objection to, to the new signage at all. Hey, thanks very much. Uh, Dennis. I have nothing more to add. I think it's fine. Hey. Walton. I think that the uh, size uh, differential would be compensated for by the greater legibility of the new font, as in if it 
did shrink, as Melinda was saying, it would still end up being more legible, perhaps, than the same size would be in the cursive. It's one comment. The other thing is, I think that the cheese shops lettering across the street is the most obvious uh, touch point for a font. And this is certainly in keeping with that. And then just say quickly, in terms of legibility, I think it was a BBC story about cursive and that it's going to not be taught nearly as much as it has been in the past, and that there are <laughs> many, many citizens who can't read cursive at this point. So it's probably a good move. <laughs> Let's build. Thanks for reminding us. Thank you, Walton. Uh, Kate. I agree with Melinda. I think the letters that are on the facade um, come on a bit too strong, uh, particularly as Walter just pointed out, it's so much more legible to begin with. I also um, am wondering if the sign, um, you know, our other composite signs show some degree of relief. Uh, is this sign just flat painted on or are the letters incised in any way? Uh, thanks very much, uh, Kate. Uh, Paul, where is here? So yeah. if you can comment on this application. Um, I didn't hear all of it, so I don't know that it would be appropriate, but so I, I don't have any comments in short. Okay. Well, okay. Uh, I will echo what... Uh, I will echo what... Uh, oh, I, I have a lot of echo myself. I, I have a lot of echo myself. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear my echo? Yes. Okay. No, I think it's better now, Louis. I think it's yeah, better. Yeah, something happened. Okay, I, I agree with uh, uh, Melinda and I agree with Kate. I think that uh, it would be better if the sign was a little smaller. But on the other hand, I don't think that this is a, a deal breaker. And I don't think that uh, the advantage that we may achieve by making it a little smaller, it's going to justify the effort of doing so. So I won't have any objections. Uh, are there any comments from the public? Okay, in the absence of public comments, uh, I will make first an amendment to the voting members and uh, uh, I will uh, ask uh, uh, Mr. Moss to uh, go back to being a non-voting member as uh, we have a poll where, uh, which is a full member uh, present now. And uh, I will ask the commission for a motion to uh, approve, approve with conditions, deny or continue the application of Wall 24 Walden Street. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Please. So nobody else has an issue with the sign just being a flat surface because then we'll get others that are that way. And this is a big sign. Now, I think you should get an answer to your question. You say, well, maybe the applicant can uh, answer Kate's question. <laughs> yeah, these are just individual letters that are put on there. It's not a pan sign. It's so they nice. stand out. They're letters that are applied on the oh, okay. flat board. Yeah, there's Correct. a little bit of space. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah there's, no, there's no, yeah, there's nothing that's on the back of it or anything like that. They just go straight to the wall. Oh, no, I mean on the blade sign. Oh, I'm um, sorry about that. Oh, the blade sign. Oh, sorry. The blade sign. Is that just painted or is there any degree of, um, you know, three-dimensionality to the surface? Correct. That is painted on. It's, um, it's acrylic painted, actually. Yeah. So to my fellow commissioners, vibe. normally with signs, we have had them um, to, so that they look like they're wood carved. Uh, that they exhibit some degree of depth in the letters. So I'm just bringing that to our attention because other signs in the future, it's easier to just get a flat painted sign. So is that something that the applicant would consider to put uh, yeah, there is some, a, yeah, there is some yeah. cut vinyl on there too. So it doesn't just look like a plain, you know, wooden sign like that. The vinyl kind of gives it like a little effect on it. Because it's vinyl. I mean, so what's what's cut in the vinyl? What, where where it's the detail? I'm sorry. So, 
Is are the letters silk screen? Are the letters screened on? I mean, they're are they painted on? Correct. Yeah. The, so the letters in the um, the logo there. So you said that it's, it's a vinyl surface and something's cut. Vinyl surface. The, the question so would what is there any so relief? The letter, so the um, I could ask the I don't I would have to speak to the designer on that one. I'm not. 100% on that. Because in the current sign, there's a degree of relief to the letters. And Correct. So yeah, asking, I, 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 get what, I, I see what you mean by that. Yeah, how it like yeah, sticks so out. So I'm asking little. if Correct. the new yeah. sign has that. I would, I would have to speak with the designer on that one. I am not 100% on that one. I don't, I unfortunately, like we have a designer who designs the signs and I, I'm just, I'm not 100% on that. So I can't mm -hmm. give you a clear answer. Okay, is it is that something that you would consider that you believe that would make the sign uh, much better? Because I think that Kate uh, has an, has an important point that I think that we had overlooked. I believe there are acrylic letters that are on the aluminum backing, but um, we'll verify that. But I have no objection to that. Um, that's that was the intent of the design. And if you see from the side, it does look like there's there's a little bit of three dimensionality on it when you're seeing it from that that side angle there, but. Um, if you go back to that that image, I think it says um, two, two uh, right underneath the blade. So yeah, letters are what does it say? Two eighth acrylic painted brown. So I, I, I thought that meant that it would be affixed to the actual aluminum backing, so that it did had three dimensionality on there. But we will make sure that that is the case. Okay. So will the commission consider this a uh, requirement for approval or is should this be optional to the applicant? I would consider it a requirement. Okay. So I think that there are two options. Uh, one of them is that uh, 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 I believe that the application could be approved as long as the a new design uh, representing the letters uh, sticking out from this flat surface be submitted to the HTC administratively, or the other option is that uh, that the applicant uh, uh, creates a, a design and uh, presents it in this commission, uh, and we continue the application. Uh, those are the two options. Uh, the issue is whether the applicant is willing to understand to to entertain having the letters on relief instead of being flat. Sorry, just for clarification, though, if that design currently is um what you're saying though then we would would we still have to come back well we we, confirming that whether that actual way it's portrayed yeah on the if, design. It, if you agree that uh that uh the the letters will be uh, sticking out from the flat surface of design then uh, uh i think that we can approve the application but we still would need to have a revised plan that represents or that indicates that the letters are not flat that's all and that that can be sub, uh, submitted administratively, but of course that implies that you that you un, uh, understand the request that that, that uh, Ms. Chartner made, and that you agree with it. Absolutely, no, I just wanted to clarify whether we need to actually come back and appear here just to confirm that those. No, no, you see, I think the application could be approved tonight, and then you can submit that new plan administratively as long as the as the whole commission agrees with it and makes a motion for for approval. Great, thank you. Okay, so uh, if the commission is comfortable, uh, we can uh, uh, we can consider the application, and then we can uh, determine whether, uh, with the condition that uh, the applicant submit further uh, drawings that will represent that the letters are on relief and not flat. Uh, can I hear a motion? I move that we approve the sign as submitted with the proviso that the letters on the blade sign uh, um, <clears throat> stick out from the surface and that the paperwork to prove this gets uh, 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 provided administratively to the, uh, to the office. Any seconds? Second. Okay, I am gonna go around, uh, Kate. Hi. Uh, Walton. Hi. Dennis? Aye. Catherine? Aye. 
Henry? Aye. Melinda? Aye. And Paul? Aye. And I'm an I as well. Okay, so we look forward to seeing the. the, the how I go again? Um, all right, so well, th th thank you very much. We'll, we'll uh, see the. Uh, the thank you very much. I'll have them. Um, I'll have them fix those drawings and send it over um, to your administration. Okay, thank you. thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, now, the next application is uh, the Concord Art Association, 37 Lexington Road. Uh, Mrs. Schartner will recuse herself, and uh, Mr. Fiore will be a voting member, in addition to the other four uh, full members. Uh, so, I see Mr. Battle here, a familiar face. Good evening. Welcome. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> um, this is, uh, this is essentially a resubmission of the application we had previously been approved for. Uh, nothing has changed. We just have, we missed that the extension, uh, that the approval only lasted for six months and it's taken time going through the other uh, uh, town, uh, town departments. So we are in the midst of doing all that and are asking for a, essentially an extension or a renewal, whatever the proper term is. I'd be happy to go through the full presentation again, but many of the voting members are still still present on the commission and you guys can decide what the appropriate course of action for me is. Uh, I agree with you. <laughs> and uh, uh, I will uh, do a quick uh, round of the members of the commission uh, to hear their opinions. Uh, but I believe that uh, this is exactly as you described. This is the same application. I went through all the details and it's the same thing that we approved uh, back in April. Uh, so, Paul. Um, yes, I concur that we do not need to have Mr. Battle go through it all again. And um, <laughs> so I, I, I'm fine with, with approving the extension. Thank you, Paul. Melinda. I'm fine with approving the, excuse me, with approving the extension. Henry? Um, I think I should abstain. Okay. Uh, Catherine. I remember the application and the details very well, and um, I have no objections to moving forward. Okay. The Dennis? Opinion. I agree with my comrades. I have no problem. Okay. And um, Walton? I've brought myself up to speed as best I can. I'm familiar with the project, and I think it's fine. Hey, Kate? No, you are recused. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and I agree. Uh, so I don't think that we need any public comment. All that process has been carried on be uh, previously. So I think that the application, it's, a, it's a, a re approved and um, will give you some information in order to avoid this issue in the future, uh, which complies with the regulations. So you don't have to come over here for this purpose again. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank so, you. Well, thank you very much. So, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Oh, please. Should, well, should we put a time limit on? Should we grant an extension for a defined period, such as six months, as opposed well, to just an open-ended? Well, well, what we're doing is that well, we are we are we, we are approving the application yeah, again, which means that the clock is starts sticking from the beginning. Okay. So just to clarify, because um, they're well past their um, their the due date for an extension, this would have to be a new certificate. Everything yeah. could stay the same, but this would be a new certificate, not an extension. Yeah, that's a, that's exactly what I'm saying. This is a this is a new application that has been approved uh, under special circumstances because there's no change from a previously approved application. And therefore, it's like a brand new, and you will get a brand new certificate of approval. That satisfactory? <laughs> okay. All right. The next application is uh, a 615 Lower Road, the Barrett Farm Historic District, to construct a single family dwelling and associated site improvements on a vacant lot. 
As uh, everybody knows, this application has generated a lot of interest. We have uh, in excess of 30 or 40 letters in the website expressing various views about it. There's a document with 260 signatures expressing their views about this application. And it's a matter of public record that, that uh, the application was uh, denied a number of times beforehand. And that uh, the uh, uh, applicant or the owner has uh, engaged uh, with the town in order to uh, find uh, uh, some alternatives or some solutions or some ways. I want to, uh, as the chair of the HDC, I, can, I want to express publicly that no member of the HDC has been involved in, in any discussions or conversations with the applicant. We have offered the applicant the resources that we offer all the applicants, which is that uh, every applicant is uh, welcome to discuss their projects informally with members of the commission before the uh, project is submitted. And uh, we see that as a consultative process, which has been very positive. So keep in mind that there are a number of issues involved. Uh, Mina McCarriers, attorney for the town, has been kind enough to uh, join us for tonight, and he will be may, making a statement before we start the discussion. So go ahead, Mina. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Luis. Um, I don't have much to add. I just want to just remind everyone and the members of the public um, tuning in as well um, about where the process uh, is, just to be clear on, on where we are. Um, as Luis noted, the, an, a prior application uh, at this site was rejected, um, I believe in June or, or early July. Um, the applicant there, thereafter filed an appeal in a superior court. Um, and the um, as, as is often the case um, when there is a land use appeal, uh, there is an, uh, an effort to see first where is the case going and how and whether it can be resolved. Um, more efficiently than putting the town or the applicant um, through the uh, time and expense of litigation. Um, in that regard, the applicant did agree to pause the litigation that they had filed um, and bring back uh, another proposal. Um, as Luis mentioned, uh, no member of the HDC was involved in discussions. We, we made that very clear from the outset. Um, and the only discussions were had with staff in the normal consultation process, uh, in this and and with me and and council, um, mostly on procedural issues uh, to to bring it back here, um, with the with the goal of uh, simply helping remind the applicant of the concerns raised with prior versions of this application or prior prior applications. Um, the applicant has now recent has now submitted this new. Proposal, um, new as in current, uh, it's up for the HDC to decide under the same standards as it has in the past and with the same, um, under the same criteria, whether this meets the requirements for a certificate of appropriateness. Um, as a reminder from, from June, the, the key issue was size and massing in relation to the lot, um, the area, and as, as protected by screening, the three ways for measuring size uh, or assessing size in connection with the enabling legislation. Um, I'll be available to answer questions as you hear the presentation or, uh, and if you get to the to deliberations later, but in the meantime, I will, uh, this should proceed in the normal course like any other review. So thank you, Luis. Thank you very much, Mina. So uh, who is here from 615? I will see Mr. Bushnell here perhaps, or uh, I see Elisa Stone, uh, who, who will be presenting? Mr. Chair? Yes. My, my name is Jonathan Silverstein. I am an attorney uh, with an office in Concord at 9 Damon Mills Square. I'm representing the applicant this evening. You will also uh, hear from some other members of the project team. Uh, Thank you for the opportunity to present this new plan. And uh, thank you to Mina for that preface. Um, uh, I'm gonna give the commission a brief overview of, of uh, what we're presenting and how we got here. Uh, then I'll ask Steve Fusco uh, to walk the commission through the perspective renderings that he prepared and that we've submitted. And then after Steve, uh, project architect, Elise Stone will discuss the design. Uh, and how it comports with uh, the feedback that we received 
uh, during the conversations that um, town council just mentioned. Uh, so as town council mentioned, the uh, applicant filed an appeal from the prior decision of the commission. Uh, however, shortly after doing so, both parties through their council agreed it would be worthwhile to make one final effort to avoid protracted, costly and disruptive litigation. Uh, the applicant and his team had a number of meetings with town staff to obtain feedback on what they thought would help uh, improve the project and increase uh, its um, uh, consistency with uh, with what their commission is looking for. Um, the proposed plans that we've submitted incorporate all that feedback. Um, I'll give you a few examples. It pushes the structure as far back on the lot as possible away from the road. Uh, it reduces the scale and massing at the front of the lot with a very modest single story portion of the structure closest to the street, transitioning to a somewhat larger barn-like portion of the structure in the back. Uh, this structure contains the, uh, the two car garage, uh, the rear portion of, of the structure, the barn-like area, um, and the garage faces the side of the lot rather than the street uh, to reduce its, uh, its visibility from the street. Uh, and I do note that the, um, the uh, transition that I just described is consistent with, though not mimicking, the characteristics of the district as described in the staff memorandum that the commission received uh, in relation to this matter. Uh, and I'm just going to quote a small portion of that memorandum. It says that despite differences in style and scale, the general massing of these extended farmhouses are characteristic of the district in particular in rural New England in general. In his classic study, Big House, Little House, Backhouse Barn, the Connected Farm Buildings of New England, architect Thomas Hooka illustrates many examples of modest houses with attached subsidiary structures culminating in a large attached barn set back from the street. Uh, so we received that feedback. We were directed to that um, uh, study uh, and, and took it to heart. And, and uh, Elise will be able to walk the commission through that and how we arrived at how she arrived at that, uh, that current design. Um, one other thing I want to um, note from your staff memo is that um, it describes how the Hildreth Corner area is not one of spaces. It's one that's changed over time in a number of ways from the layout of the streets to the types of buildings that have been both on this property uh, in the past uh, and on nearby properties. Um, uh, another thing we did, which was suggested, was um, to propose a gambrel roof uh, to reduce the height of the front portion of the structure, again, reducing the massing and scale closer to the street. Uh, so I'm happy to answer any questions the commission may have right now. Um, otherwise, I will first turn it over to Steve, uh, who will be followed by Elise. Uh, before I do that, I would like to ask for the opportunity to address and respond to comments on the application that may come up during public comment um, before the commission closes the hearing. Um, and uh, with that, I will uh, turn it over to Steve. Okay, let me <clears throat> interrupt you for a second, if I may. Sure. Uh, I, I just want to clarify certain matters. You are referring to a staff memo. Uh, is, uh, could you uh, explain to, to the commission which staff memo are you referring to? Um, Sure, I'm referring to a document that's uh, headed Historic Districts Commission, January 26, 2023, New Public Hearing Agenda Notes. Uh, and it has uh, notes with respect to each of the applications. And I was quoting portions of the notes with respect to, uh, to this specific application. I had assumed that this was a, a memorandum prepared by your staff. and. If I'm incorrect in that regard, I, I apologize. No. So it certainly does reflect the, the feedback we received in the conversations that we had uh, leading up to this process. No, no, certainly it's just a matter of, uh, of uh, clarification because we do have that uh, agenda notes and uh, uh, most of us uh, have read them. 
Then as a matter of procedure, uh, I will mention that the way that this will be conducted is that uh, uh, the applicant, uh, which you are the first part of it, uh, will have the opportunity to present uh, the plan. Then uh, the commissioners uh, will have the opportunity to make comments. And then uh, the public will have an opportunity to make comments. And I encourage uh, the applicants and all interested in uh, making notes and uh, determining what are the questions that should be answered or what are the questions that are being asked. And then at the end of uh, the public comments, uh, the applicant uh, in any form, it, it may be all three of you or <laughs> et cetera, will have an opportunity to address uh, the comments of the public. Uh, but uh, we are going to avoid uh, sort of going in a back and forth because that would make the proceedings extremely cumbersome. Uh, so, uh, you already have your part, uh, are, who's next? <laughs> uh, I'm going to ask Steve Fusco, who I believe is on, to uh, walk the commission through the renderings that were submitted, and um, if those renderings are able to be brought up, uh, that would probably assist him in that portion of the discussion. Thanks very much, Mr. Fusco. Um, thanks for having me. My name is Steve Fosco. Um, I'm a landscape architect. Um, work for uh, I have a I'm a Concord resident, and um, I have a residential design business here. And I also work for a um, CDM Smith, which is a large multidisciplinary firm. I've been doing um, doing renderings like this uh, for most of my career. Prior to moving up here, I worked for um, the Central Park Conservancy in New York City, uh, where it's really kind of how I learned how to do this. To be honest with you. Uh, so what I did here is built, uh, I took the architectural plans, uh, floor plans and elevations, and I built a 3D model to scale of it um, using SketchUp and then also using SketchUp's uh, photo match technology, um, built the perspective in SketchUp as well within the 3D program. Um, from there, I pushed it, you know, basically took a picture of the 3D model program, pushed that into Photoshop and was able to um, put the trees that are in front of the actual house in front of it and create the foreground. Um, but that is, uh, and it's orientated off of the uh, landscape plan, the site plan that was provided to me. So that's how I built it. Okay. So that refers to the siting of the structure. Uh, can you mention other particulars of the siting? Can you discuss perhaps with a, a 2D projection from the top to see how it relates to the current vegetation, the, uh, how the road uh, that is depicted there uh, approaches the main structure and what is the distance between the back of the structure from the edge of the lot and the front of the structure from the street. I, I, off the top of my head, I do not know the distance off the back of the lot, since I was concerned that disappears into the into the perspective. So I was concerned with the distance from the front, which I believe is 60 feet. Um, on site, there was a uh, markers put in the photograph. So I was able to drop it right on it um, and tweak it. The, the program does a really good job of taking the photo and you know uses algorithms and AI and whatnot to, to get it pretty close to right to scale. And then you have to kind of adjust a little bit, move the horizon line, things like that. So it's, it's sitting in the photo correctly. Um, but as shown there, it's, uh, you know, the front of the house is around, I think like 20 feet or so um, with the, you know, the way the perspective is the barn portion of it is the largest one, which is only 31 feet high, which is you know, lower than most uh, two story buildings. So it, it does kind of look, um, small within the site, but that's, that is a true to scale rendering. So. So would you be willing to, to put up a, a 2D map from, from the top as a site plan and discuss the siting of the structure a, from different perspectives, not just from the, from the front of the street as you are showing now? Yeah, that's, that's what I want to discuss. You see, what are the distances to the front, to the back? What are the distances to the current vegetation? Uh, 
what's uh, the uh, sighting of the whole structure in the lot? Well, I, this is not my landscape design. So, I mean, I can speak to it as a landscape architect. Um, but I mean, from my perspective, um, no pun intended, when I was making the perspective, my interpretation of when I was placing it in there, it seems to be cited at an angle that kind of minimizes the impact to um, the pedestrian and, and, and driver in this case. Um, not having it dead on kind of allows your eye to kind of go back. Um, the way that the, the driveway comes off on the western side of the telephone pole, it creates another kind of perspective that goes back uh, that way. So by orientating the house at that angle, it, in a way, it makes it sit in the landscape um, a little bit better. You know, you can see in the back, there's large pines and, and um, like the tree stand that's in the back there. And I think that the material choice, the way that that sits against that background um, helps kind of minimize the visual impact that any structure could have there. Um, also too, one thing to say is that, you know, when I was rendering this, there is a, a proposed sugar maple that is behind the telephone pole to the, to the left of it on the image. And I didn't put that in because once I put that in, you couldn't see a lot of it. Um, and also this picture is taken in the winter and all of the images I have of plant material uh, have leaves on it because it would, you wouldn't really see it. So it looked kind of crazy. So I also didn't put that in there. But uh, you know, from the top picture, that's another really good one. If that sugar maple was there, that would block the house on the adjacent property um, a lot better than is currently there. Okay, is there, is there anything you want to add uh, so members of the commission can make uh, assessments about the siting of the structure? Um, no, I don't have anything to add on the siting, no. Okay, um, I see Lisa is uh, raising her hand, but I think that she's gonna have the opportunity to have the floor to herself. So that's the reason that I'm not, uh, um, um, I'm asking first um, Mr. Fusco to finish. So if you are done, then I will ask Elise to uh, to take over and um, it gives us her perspective. You are muted. <laughs> you are still muted. You are not muted, but we cannot hear you. Would you consider uh, assessing by phone? And at least we can hear you and maybe we can see you by other direction. Mr. Chair, uh, my apologies for this uh, little technical issue. I did just uh, suggest, uh, I believe the phone number to call in is on the agenda. 
Uh, yes. So I did, I did just make that suggestion as well. Um, yeah. Offline. Yeah, because we, we're all eagerly awaiting it. <laughs> Well, it looks like we have very persistent gremlins because uh, I think she's talking about it. We cannot hear her. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> I think that we, we have a, a problem. <laughs> maybe if you can convey to her that she may be able to restart the whole session and maybe it will agree to cooperate at that time. <laughs> Sounds good. I, I think they can hear us. Uh, Kim, would you be able to just uh, cancel out of the Zoom and try to log back in? Um, I'm gonna let Paul make an observation. Paul, please go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering whether we might want to move on to the next agenda item and come back. I, um, I was rather than holding up the whole town here. That would be fair. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking oh, of that. Just and I, I I don't know exactly how to do it procedurally, but uh Do I make a motion? <laughs> yes, please make a motion. Uh I move to uh, pause on 615 Lowell Road due to technical difficulties and move on to the next agenda item 377 Main Street. Any seconds? Okay, okay there are seconds. So, uh, Kate? Aye. Walton? Yes. Dennis? Aye. Uh, Catherine? Aye. Henry? Aye. Melinda? Aye. Paul? Aye. And I'm an I as well. So let's uh, uh, pause the application of 615 Lower Road until the technical issues are resolved. And we'll go ahead to the application of Jennifer and Thomas Kelly, 377 Main Street, uh, to construct a new side entry porch, install new windows, door, lighting, and gutters. Is the applicant here? Yeah, I am. I'm here, Jennifer. There Kelly. you are. <laughs> yes, and uh, the architect Marshall McLean is on here as well. So I'm, I can't well, see him on my screen, but I know he's well. He's here. Welcome to both of you. Uh, if you were so kind to present uh, the project, sure. Um, so we were before you all last spring, um, and you approved a portico for our house, which has not yet been built yet, but it's coming this spring. And in the meantime, we've done a bunch of interior renovation. Um, and we're back before you tonight on three things. Um, well, really two, I guess. Um, we've 
designed a new porch for the driveway entry at the far back of the house um, that we're looking to have approved. It's um, not particularly visible from the public way. In fact, the door itself is not visible or the light and not really visible at all. Um, and you can just see the little porch Marshall's design kind of peeking out um, outside of a bay window. So uh, it's designed to look like um, the other porches on the house. It's got a low hip roof, um, simple little columns. Um, this is the existing drawing. You can see where the side porch lives. Um, and then further down, there's a drawing of what the new one will look like quite a few pages down. Um, yeah, let's see, keep going. That's, yeah. Yep, there it is. Yeah, right there. Um, and that's a view looking at it straight from my driveway. The view from the street is quite subtle. Um, so that's the first item on our agenda. Um, I, do you want me to just continue on to the next one or would you guys like to discuss that one first? No, just go ahead and present the whole project and then we okay. can discuss the whole thing. <laughs> Okay, and then the next thing we're doing is we've been doing a, a major interior renovation, which includes a new kitchen. Um, it's at the far back of the house. Yeah, she has it drawn there. Uh, again, not particularly visible from the street. The issue is we had planned on keeping the windows in that section of the house, um, even though they're quite inconvenient because our kitchen cabinets abut them and, and always have. But what we didn't realize uh, was that when we did the renovation to bring it up to electrical code, they want us to put uh, electrical outlets above counter level, essentially in the middle of all the current windows. So we are petitioning to replace the windows. They're in the kitchen. Um, there are three of them now that are relevant, that are in that drawing there. Um, and to replace them with four windows that are short, a little bit shorter so that they're above counter height um, and uh, in a th bank of three instead of just two isolated ones. And as I say in the petition, you know, this house has all sorts of different kinds of windows. It is very eclectic in uh, when the windows were designed. So we feel that what we've designed here is aesthetically appealing, keeps in, in the style of the house. It's in a very subtle location at the back of the house that's not particularly visible from the street um, and greatly improves from the interior, how our space is used while not de detracting at all on the outside. Um, we haven't messed at all with the main front of the house, which is the oldest and most historically interesting part of the house. Um, and in our petition, we have all of the specs about the materials for these items, which I'm happy to go into in more detail if, if you all want. Um, and then the final item that we're working on are gutters. Um, the back part of the house that we're looking at in that drawing where the kitchen windows are has currently has a wooden gutter that runs the length of that, uh, not the porch area actually, but just the kitchen area and around the bend. It's dilapidated. There are pictures of it in our petition. It definitely needs to be replaced. And we're petitioning to replace it with a fiberglass um, gutter that should look identical to what's there now. I just, we would really like to avoid putting wood up again. And then we'd like to add the same kind of gutters um, to the new porch we're asking you to approve, same sort of similar style design, because um, that porch also gets a lot of runoff uh, from that bay area on the left. And then ideally we'd like to run a gutter across the front of the house um, because we're getting a fair amount of erosion down by those casement windows on the basement. Um, it's dry down there for now, but we're a little concerned about that. So that one, um, there is no gutter there now. And because it's such a, a overhanging roof, the eave is quite deep. It would, again, we were thinking with your approval that we would do fiberglass to make it look like trim work. Um, so it would be quite subtle. So those are our three things for today. And I'm happy to provide any more details on the materials and, and whatnot. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I just wanted to mention that your the package of your presentation was uh, very well done and very very helpful. Thanks. So I want to recognize that. <laughs> um, I'll ask the members of the commission for comments. Uh, Paul? Um, let's see, with respect to the gutters, your, your replacing gutters or adding a gutter in one instance, you're replacing existing wooden gutters on what the 
on the back and you're yes. adding on the porch and to the front of the house, hopefully, is that right? That's correct. The existing ones run alongside the kitchen where the window petition is and then scooch back out of view to an area that you guys can't see. And so to that extent, other than fiberglass rather than wood, there's no particular visual change as regards, I mean, even if it could be seen from the public way. Uh, the, the, for the one we're replacing, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, you, you go ahead. I'm, I'm I was just going to say for the one we're replacing, what we're suggesting we replace it with should look the same. I mean, from what the yeah. fiberglass gutter people are saying, it, it should look basically identical. Um, right. Then there's the porch, which doesn't currently exist and obviously then doesn't have one yet. So that we were thinking we would just mimic, you know, the same kind of fiberglass thing so that it blends in with the other ones. And the front, um, you know, we're, we're open if you would rather we use another material. Um, I just, we thought we would stick with the fiberglass because that's what we were looking for on the other two. So um, I'm open to input from the, from the commission. Okay. So my question with respect to the front is what what does that look like? I mean, you showed an elevation in which there is no gutter at the moment, correct? That's right. There is no gutter. There's an overhang. And so presumably there'll be some visual impact from a gutter. It might be very subtle, but it'll be there. Is that is our do I that's, have that right? Yeah, that's that's correct. It's fair to say. And I don't have a drawing for that at this point. So if that's of concern, um, you know, we could we could come back with a drawing for just the front part. Um, yeah. I have in I mean, the, the very back of the petition, there are some pictures from the company that makes the gutters that would give you an idea of of how such gutters would would appear. But I don't have a, a drawing of it. OK, um, yeah, I don't know that that's disqualifying. I mean, it's a gutter, but, um, but help me with the distance from the public way. How far off the off any public way is the front side of the face facing of the house? Uh, I think it's about twenty five feet. But if hang on, we can look at my plot plan there yeah, and it'll it's tell close. us it's right. uh, yeah. twenty feet, twenty four to the front of the house. Okay. Um, all right. I, I have no problem with the kitchen windows or anything else. And I, I think probably a gutter can be relatively subtle. So uh, anyway, that answers my questions. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, Paul. Uh, Melinda. Uh, hold on here. Oh, OK. Uh, <laughs> I think everything will be fine. You um, obviously need a gutter on the front of the house. Um, so the most um, innocuous model that you can find to put on it. I'm sure you've looked into that. The other two gutters, I think, will be perfectly fine. Um, I have no objection with their whole proposal. Thank you very much, Melinda. Henry. I think that um, McLuhan Architects and uh, the household has been managing this very thoughtfully and I have no objections. I look forward to seeing it all built. Thank you very much, Henry. Hey, Catherine. I too have no objections. Um, I think, you know, this is a practical consideration and it's gonna be done as subtly as possible. So I think it's fine. Thank you very much, uh, Catherine. Dennis. Um, I agree with all that's been said or not said, uh, particularly with uh, Henry. I think that uh, this is well done and I have no problems with it. Thank you so much, uh, Walton. I have no problem with uh, fiberglass or gutters or porch or any of that. Just a, a quick observation as you look from the street at the house, the windows, obviously, the first and second story, uh, you know, don't line up. But on, but on, on, the, on the right side, as, right you, side face, as you face, the, the fenestration, fenestration is the same is as on the front of the house come down i think it's uh 15 over 15s maybe and on the and the kitchen is going to be is that an eight over eight that's spec yes yeah it, it's very subtle but when you take the entirety of the front of the house 
everything is consistent across the kitchen is obviously not. Yeah, I think that's it's just a, it's a very small point, but some yeah, and what we went and maybe Marshall could speak to this too. We debated what to do with those windows and we focused on keeping the size of the panes comparable mm -hmm. to what you see in the other windows so that they would, even though the number of panes are are different, um, they're capturing the essence of the size of the of the frames. I, I have messed with kitchen windows and counters and wells and all sorts of things in my time. I'm down with that. I'm fine. Looks great. Um, I can just uh, speak to that. It's Marshall McLean, 128 Bedford Street. Um, yeah, we're focused on the proportions of the lights themselves as much as the number of the lights. And I think mm -hmm. when you downsize a window, you have to sometimes change the actual number of lights. But it... it Gives you the same kind of look when you're done. So that was a, that was a thinking behind it. Sure, makes sense to me. Thank you. Thanks very much, Walter. Hey, Kate. Uh, no further questions. Okay, and I don't have any more observations other than what has already been made. So I'm asked for the public uh, for comments. Uh, if there are no comments from the public, then I will ask uh, for the commission for a motion. The options are that uh, we uh, reject approved with conditions or continue. One of the options is that we do a site visit. Uh, I'm going to leave that up to the, to the commission to make that determination. So I will look forward to, uh, for a motion. <laughs> uh. I move that we approve the application for certificate of appropriateness as presented tonight without a site visit for the property at 377 Main Street, um, consistent only with the presentation that's been made before. Any seconds? I second. Uh, okay. So, uh, Kate? Aye. I'm going to ask only the full members to vote this time. Uh, Catherine? Aye. Melinda? Aye. Paul? Aye. And I'm um, an I as well. So congratulations. And thanks for your presentation again, which was very clear and very useful. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And hopefully the spring work is going to start in another month or two. So, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, hey, I had my hand raised, was not recognized. Oh, but I did uh, I'm sorry. I, I still don't recognize you. <laughs> oh, at the Sorry. Ed Tillman, 656 Barrett's Mill Road. Yeah. I did have a question, I'll, and I'm not opposing it. I have a question on what they're doing for downspout, particularly on the front. Oh, good question. Yep. We, let me just look at my notes. And I presume the gutters are the historically accurate ones that have the same profile as the wooden ones. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Um, the downspouts. Uh, yeah, I think, I'm sorry, I'm looking for my little material sheet. The ones that are on the house now are not historically accurate. They're just kind of old beat up falling down uh, aluminum ones. Um, sorry, I'm looking for that list we put together with all the materials. Um, they would be painted, um, so fiberglass for the gutters and then the downspouts will be like a painted aluminum, I think. But we were thinking of doing them round, you know, the historical round shape. Okay, you should spend some time thinking about that because that's a problem that often causes, makes it difficult. But I'll, I'll be quiet and, and shut up at this point. You mean from a practical perspective or from an aesthetic perspective? Aesthetic. Okay, let, let, let's do the following. I think that the applicant has received some interesting feedback and uh, the applicant may want to change some details of the application that has already been approved. That can be done administratively, and uh, we can consider it. If it's a minor change, it will be managed at the administrative level, so it shouldn't be any problem. So you are, you are free still to, to make some changes, uh, uh, some pragmatic changes to the design. Okay, thank you. 
All right, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, go to the uh, continue to over here is the Concord Nasari Corporation uh, to install a stone bench in the front lawn. Uh, is the applicant here? There you are, Mr. Forbes. I will uh, mention that uh, this application was uh, previously presented. Uh, there was uh, essentially an agreement on uh, the plan and that we requested if, if for further details on the drawings which have now been submitted. So if, if Mr. Forbes wants to, to mention any changes that have been made or any reference from the previous application, please go ahead and welcome. Maynard Forbes, 27-3 Concord Green, a uh, member of a board member of the Concord Masonic Corporation the entity that owns the building at 28, uh, 58 Monument Square. Uh, I have submitted three new pages. Uh, the first is a, is a survey drawing of the property. It shows the location in the, uh, about three feet back from the town sidewalk and towards the boundary with Monument Hall the property owned by the Catholic uh, uh, Church, uh, Holy Family Catholic Church. Uh, the second drawing uh, shows the, uh, uh, the bench itself. It's five feet, uh, uh, yes, five foot three inches. It, it's gray granite from New Hampshire five feet long and uh, 18 inches deep. And it sits on uh, legs that are uh, 11 by 15, 11 by three, uh, and uh, they're 15 uh, inches high. They will be placed on two granite posts uh, as supports. The posts, the granite posts are 11 inches by 15 inches by 36 inches deep. The placement uh, on the drawing, uh, the previous drawing, it is approximate because there is a cable uh, that runs from the sidewalk back to the building, and we will deal with dig safe to find the exact location and keep either side of of the cable. The bottom of the uh, second drawing shows the uh, engraving on the front side, Corinthian Lodge, 1797, with two Masonic square and compasses, and on the back side, uh, charted by Paul Revere. Uh, the third drawing shows a completed bench from the front and from the rear. Questions? Thanks very much. I'll ask the commissioners for comments. Uh, Kate? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, hi. Uh, hi there. Um, the bench looks great. And I'm happy to see Paul Revere added. One thing that struck me as soon as I looked at the image when we got it was, I know this is not the case for Masonic lodges, but there are some organizations that are identified with a number. And so I wonder if you would consider in between Corinthian Lodge and 1797, um, you know, the words kind of EST period is established in 1797. So it's clear that it's the year and not um, a lodge number. Uh, yes, uh, one quick note on that. Massachusetts is the only uh, group of lodges that does not have a number. Mm. All, the numbers <laughs> that you mentioned, every other state, every other country uh, that has a Masonic lodge has a number after the name. Mm -hmm. But because of the uh, uh, Discussions between the Grand Lodge of Scotland and the Grand Lodge of England, they finally came together and decided that nobody was number one, 
there would be no numbers anywhere. Well, you would like, certainly you wouldn't would be like considered, you, you know, like 1,797. Um, I understand your, your point. Uh, I just wanted to make the point that we don't have a number. Uh, no, I didn't think so. I mean, I had never seen one, but I thought, well, if the whole point is to put this year on, you know, for the average bear who's passing by, let's make sure they know it's a year. I, I don't think we have any objections of putting in a smaller font ESG. Mm. Capital, period, capital E, lowercase s, lowercase t, period. So, well, that would be great, I think, but I'll see what my other commissioners think. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Kate uh, Walton. Um, looks great. It's interesting. It adds a little more historic character. And Kate, I think you're uh, smack on with your analysis and request there. Thanks very much, uh, Dennis. I have nothing to add. It looks fine. Uh, Catherine? Uh, I too have nothing to add. I think it's it's handsome, good looking, you know, nice nice to have the historic reference. So I think it's great. Thanks very much, uh, Henry. Uh, I also think it's fine. I agree with Kate that uh, it's important people understand 1797. It's not the street number. <laughs> fully on the building. Uh, Melinda. <laughs> I think it's great. I'm sorry in a way that the Paul Revere reference can't be seen from the street because I think it's um, quite interesting, but there's no other way to do it unless you were to put a plaque or something. So it's fine. I think the whole, um, <coughs> we'll be very pleased with it all when it's done. Thanks very much, Paul. I have nothing to add. Okay. And I have nothing to add. I think it's, it's a very good design. It's a very good design. Any comments uh, from the any public? Any comments from the public? Uh, Brooke uh, yeah. Whiting Cash. Uh, Whiting Cash. Brooke Whiting Cash, 1114 Lowell Road. I just wanted to note that I believe the drawing said it was a polished finish. And polished granite has a somewhat 20th century slick sort of urban feel to it and sometimes um, appears sort of gravestone, headstone-like to a lot of people. Um, and, you know, I would wonder whether a more appropriate finish might be a, a thermal finish or a sandblasted finish that has a duller, less glossy uh, uh, look to it. Uh, you wanna address that question, uh, <laughs> Mr. Forbes? Uh, from the technical standpoint, I can't argue the point. Uh, you are you talking about the whole stone front faces as well as the top and the legs, or just the top? Uh, it would be it would be the whole stone that polished granite has a very non-historic appropriateness to it, in my professional opinion. Oh, I, I think that's an interesting point to see. Uh, are any the members of the commission wanted to weigh in into this matter? <laughs> I would agree. I would agree with her. I'd miss that I would point agree. that it was polished. So I'm glad she brought it to our attention. Yes. Same here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't think we have a problem with it. Okay. So, <clears throat> see, I don't want to believe. To, to keep uh, po postponing the application for, for more uh, specs, but uh, would the commission consider approving the application in the current status with the uh, provision that uh, the finishing of uh, the bench needs to change or needs to be modified and that this would uh, be subject to administrative approval? If that's an option, then I would like to hear for a motion. I move that we accept the application for 58 Monument Square with two changes. One is the uh, ES, EST, is that what we want, Kate, on there? Uh, in small letters, and that we want the thermal finish. Seconds. 
Um, uh, Kate, I'm going to have a second. Yes. Okay. All right. Then uh, Kate. Aye. Uh, and I'm going to ask again the full members, uh, Catherine. Aye. Melinda. Aye. Paul. Uh, maybe, but I need to understand what a, quote, thermal finish is. Is that a term of art? that means a rough hewn look or just not a polished look. I mean, it seems to me if we're gonna to go to this trouble, we ought to be sure what what we've just asked for. I can I, answer that. I can informed. answer that if you'd like, Dr. <laughs> I don't know, I don't well, know if you're permitted. So. No, go, go ahead for the matter of all clarification and information. I think we should welcome all the information we may have. Thermal is a, is a matte finish. It has some light texture to it. It is, uh, it is made by taking a flame to the stone. So it, it flakes off lightly. So it's not shiny, but it is not rough like someone chiseled it. Okay, I just then Brooke, do I understand? Then I vote aye. No, let, so let's, uh, let's what you would see on a, a granite step or a granite paver. So it's not slippery, but it doesn't have a lot of uh, variation in the finish. Are you are you, you could just Paul? say a matte finish or a non-glossy finish, finish or a non-glossy finish? I mean, I'm I'm good with thermal finish now that we understand what we're talking about. And so I vote aye. Okay. And uh, after having heard uh, all the uh, conversations, I will vote aye as well. So the application is approved uh, with the caveat that um, uh, the modifications in the finishing should be submitted administratively uh, to the HTC. Thank you very much. So have we fixed the problem with the Lisa Stone's phone or connection? Hello? Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, hi. Can you hear me? Oh, I'm, yes, I'm under, here. Yes, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm under Mike's computer. We couldn't get the other computer working. I'm really sorry about that. Um, anyway, so you can hear me now. Okay, so I will, um, I'll go back to where I'm going to talk about the plans and the draw and the, um, the elevation. So our idea of this application um, was to uh, reduce the mass in the front, reduce the mass of what you see from the street, and to push um, kind of the two-story space to the back. So I was looking at the front, you know, to try to make it feel more cottage-like and keeping it low in the front. And um, you couldn't really tell from the renderings, but um, on the drawings um, that I submitted, the architecture drawings, I did put some heights and distances. And so basically uh, the house is right from the start that bay window you see on the front elevation is at 55 feet from the um, lot line. And that's at 11 feet high. And that goes back nine feet. So then at 64 feet from the lot line, it goes to 18 feet. And then at 85 feet, it goes to 22 feet. And then the barn is at 110 feet and it goes to um, 30 feet. So. <clears throat> the idea was to keep the massing from the back. So the front part, the more cottagey feel part, is all the living space. It's all single stories. Those windows you see are clear story windows. So we lowered the wall. So the wall in the front is only seven and a half feet tall. And then it's taller inside to get the height, um, you know, to, to achieve the height in the living spaces. Um, and those windows are like clear story windows. So um, there's no second floor on that side and there's, um, there's no um, attic, et cetera. It's all what you see there. So we tried to keep the details both simple, but kind of cottagey to break up the massing. So in this, in this plan, I really worked hard to really push the massing to the back and to keep what you see from the street and as you come down the street, very small. So an issue that's been, you know, in all of them is kind of the garage space. So I felt that it would be best to keep 
the form symbols, <clears throat> you know, going towards a barn like structure and, um, you know, to put the garage in the barn. Um, on the rendering, we showed it kind of, you could see the doors, but the idea would be to actually keep the barn kind of a dark color, maybe a, a super dark gray or even a black, and even the doors keep it very dark as well. I think I was thinking of the second one there, you see the white doors, but to keep them all dark. So they really would hopefully, you know, kind of fade away. So you really would not see any doors from the front. And um, on that right side, we kept very few windows, um, <clears throat> you know, facing the neighbor. All the windows are to the back or to the left side. Um, and those are the bedrooms are in that back portion. So there's three bedrooms on the second floor there. And the master bedroom is behind the garage. Really, you really probably won't be able to see much of <clears throat> the master at all from the street. Um, there are stairs that would go, um, you know, up to the second floor of the barn and then down, but to a, an unfinished basement. You know, there's no plants at this point. The house is sitting very low to the grade. So there's no, you know, the only windows would be basement windows with, with wells. I mean, there's no... Um, thought of that. Those are all roofs so because it's there's no second story. Um, anyway, um, does anyone have any questions on the on the design? I, I just want to to ask you quickly, uh, what is the total square footage of the structure? So the square footage, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, the front portion um, that's one story is about 1800 square feet. And the back portion of the bedrooms is about 1600 square feet. Oh, so sorry. I'm sorry. It's it's a total of 3,900. Sorry. So okay. I did the front portion. I did the front single story portion and that was 1,800. So I guess the back is 1,800 as well. Okay. So it is 3,900 or 3,600? 39. I'm sorry. 3,900. 3, okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, it is in the application. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I'm going to ask the commissioners for comments. I'm going to start with Paul. Um, well, I, I think it's an admirable effort to um, take into account a number of the observations of the community and, for that matter, the committee over time. So obviously, I, I think we all respect the effort that's been made here. I, um, I think the fact that you, you created a dwelling in which, from the street, really the only perspective is from Lowell Road, I think. I mean, it's almost impossible to see this property if you're on Barrett's Mill Road, unless you were stopped at the stoplight, I think. I mean, as many times as I've driven it and tried to look, it's that lot is awfully difficult to see. So I don't think the aspects of this building, which are larger, that is to say the barn structure, is going to be visible anyway, except, as you said, from Lowell, the edge of it, which you can, uh, you can certainly mitigate with a dark color. So I, I think it's, it's a design which works and which uh, I would be willing to approve, subject to comments from my colleagues. Thanks very much, Paul. Uh, Mel Paul. Melinda. Melinda. You are muted. 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 Sorry about that. Sorry about there are some nice there changes. Are some nice changes that there are also some um, things that have been ignored. Uh, we have consistently said 3,900 is too large. And we've consistently said, we don't think you should have a, um, a garage. And neither of those things have been addressed. Um, I, I, it crossed my mind, this is a flag lot. And the house um, from front to back pretty much takes up the entire portion of the lot, um, not including the 
the flag pole part. So it, it truly is still massing. It's massing for the next door neighbors. It's massing um, on what is really majority of, I, I, I can't imagine that you're not putting this structure on what is really a half an acre on, instead of an acre because that's the only part that's buildable. Um, so I, um, although I, 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 I do think you've, you've tried very hard to make it look um, more suitable from the front, that it still doesn't come up with what the attorney actually read to us, which is, hold on, I have to find it. Um, the note about how we're historic open rural farm setting. It is not open. It's missing that. And so I still feel that I could not vote for this design. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much, uh, Melinda. Uh, Henry. I have visited this site a number of times and looked at it from a number of different perspectives. And the, um, the most important building in that area is the Hildreth House. And I think that uh, the view from there across Barrett's Mill Road to this site is not damaged by having a long elevation, which is not shown in the rendering. Because of the large open lot, next door. I've uh, consistently taken exception to the notion that this house is too big for its site, because that's a very abstract lot line observation. And if you look at the rendering that uh, we saw from Lowell Road, or you stand in Lowell Road and look, what you see is a large expanse and an expansive view uh, which is spatial. You can see all the way to the back of the red barn that's connected to the next door neighbor. So I don't believe that the house is too large for the lot. The rural indicators here are nothing to do with the, um, when the historic district was, was formed, the rural area that it was specifically addressing is the plain near Barrett's Mill Farm and that continuation of farmland. What we have are artifacts that are associated with historic farms, which are barns. I think that the big house, little house, back house, barn metaphor uh, works fairly well here. And it, it doesn't uh, upset me that there are cars tucked in under somebody's bedroom. If it were up to me, I would vote in favor of this scheme. It's come an enormous distance from this sort of everywhere tract house that we saw before the last, prior to the last uh, uh, presentation, not this one. I, uh, I will say that I miss the shingles that were in the upper portions of the last facade because they were a direct reference to the house next door and they emphasized, if nothing else, how much smaller this frontage is than the building, the house next door, which is a story higher, same materials. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Henry. Uh, Catherine? Um, I'm afraid I must disagree with, with Henry um, in, in terms of the perspective on this. Um, I will absolutely acknowledge along with my fellow commissioners that um, this project has come a long way. I think there, I think the architect in particular has made um, great efforts to reduce the massing of the facade and the view of the house um, from, from that perspective. Um, however, I um, am troubled by the clear um, non-consideration of um, our feedback from previous applications in terms of um, the overall 
volume of this house and the square footage. In fact, the square footage has grown um, instead of shrunk. Uh, in fact, I think one of the last proposals was around uh, 3,600 square feet. Um, and we are now at 3,900 square feet. I understand that the massing is towards the back, but um, I still believe this is just um, inappropriately too large for, for uh, this lot and from you know many different perspectives. And I do not think it's maintaining the character of the adjacent lots um, with how it is um, being presented right now. That, those are all my comments. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Catherine. Uh, Dennis. Um, and I'm stymied by the fact that we've said, and I think the last vote on this was we were unanimously against the, the proposal. And I think there was a strong indication that it was too big. So I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding why we said it's too big and they make it larger. It makes no sense whatsoever. Now we didn't tell them how much to make it smaller, but we did say we want it smaller. So it's sort of in your face to go about making it larger, no matter what you do with the massing, which is simply a trick of moving things around. I'd also say that, that you will see this when the, when the leaves are off the trees, from the corner of uh, Barrett's Mill and Lowell. You'll see it as you go up uh, Barrett's Mill Road. It will be there, particularly now that the back is so large. Uh, this house is simply too big for this piece of land, and I would not vote in favor of this. Thanks very much, uh, Dennis. Uh, Walton. I have uh, two things. One, as a new commissioner, I will say that if I had to base uh, my understanding of the project on the application that it certainly leaves me short and is missing, uh, to my mind, some uh, very important parts, including a narrative and description of what the work actually was. Uh, it says it's an application for new construction on the vacant lot at 615 Lowell. Uh, that's interesting, but hardly describes what's going on. I also uh, have to say that the big house, little house, back house barn uh, uh, understanding input, whatever on this, uh, ends with fields. And generally that uh, is on a much larger lot than this. And I'm not gonna go into any uh, greater detail about that because I am new, but uh, that bothers me. There I am. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Kate. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. Yes. Um, uh, yes, this is, uh, Elise has done a nice job of um, altering some things for sure. Um, but like Dennis, I'm perplexed at why we're looking at a larger application. Um, HDC has only two options to approve or deny uh, a submission, but the applicant here has many and has followed some, but not ones that he chooses not to follow. Um, and that's his, his prerogative, but um, he's got more options than we do, frankly. And, um, you know, even in um, Mr. Silverstein's words, they push the house back as far as possible well, that's as far as possible maintaining a 3,900 square foot structure. So it's not completely as far as possible. Um, and so there's some things like that that uh, I just find vexing. Um, and, uh, you know, I think you're trying, you know, the, the applicant, Mr. Bushnell and Elise are trying hard on their end, but the HDC is trying hard on our end, um, referring to you know, sections in the special act or sections in the HDC guidebook that um, put size and scope in our purview. And so um, I remain also um, vexed by a 3,900 square foot submission. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Kate. <clears throat> I will make uh, my comments as brief as possible. Uh, first of all, I don't believe that this uh, structure represents the concept of the big house, little house, etc. See, I think that the, the way that this uh, 
a house has been designed, it's just a pragmatic approach to a house that is sitting in a very narrow lot. And that's not represent any particular historic reference that uh, we could apply over here. Uh, the other issue is that uh, it, there seems to be the idea that uh, the massing of the house can be diminished by pushing the mass around the, the lot. And I don't believe that that is a successful approach. And the proof of that is that uh, I don't think that uh, the uh, impression of massing has uh, decreased in any way. I, I've been looking at this lot for some time from every possible perspective including after the new application was made. And uh, I, what I see, it's a, it's a very large block of a structure, which I don't believe it's appropriate uh, to that size. Um, then I want to echo uh, Kate Shartiner's comment to see that uh, as a commission, we, we only have a couple of options, but the applicant has multiple options. But one option that we have consistently said and we haven't said it because that's exactly what we like or that we prefer is that uh, the presence of a garage is uh, counterproductive. And the only reason that it is counterproductive is that it imposes a, an additional mass, which uh, this particular lot cannot afford. Um, so I don't believe that uh, this uh, structure as presented, uh, it's appropriate for the lot. I don't believe that it has that satisfy satisfies any of the historic references of the site. And I think that uh, it is uh, too big. Uh, so I will put, uh, stop my comments there. And then I'm going to ask the public for comments. And I will ask uh, the public uh, to try to keep the comments as brief and succinct as possible. And I'm going to start with uh, Brooke Whiting-Calf, which already has her hand uh, uh, up. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, first, I'd, then, I'd like to thank the members of the commission for ser their service to the town. I know firsthand the kind of time commitment that's involved in serving on one of these boards and the challenges when there are divisive issues of putting aside one's personal opinions and doing what's right for the town of Concord. So I appreciate your time. Um, and as several commission members have said, uh, it appears that the current application does not address um, several of the, the substantive reasons for denials in the past. Um, by pushing the mass back on the, uh, on the lot and um, enlarging the overall mass of the house, the footprint of the first floor has also increased by over 40% from the previous application. So, Though it may not raise as much up off the ground as previous applications, it covers even more of the site than it previous did, previously did. Um, there's other inconsistencies and incompleteness in the basic information that is in the application. For example, the finished floor elevation of the house on the site plan. So it doesn't give us any datum to suggest what level the floor is at other than what you can opine from the architectural elevations. And from that, one might guess that the floor is about 12 inches above, it's two steps above the grade at the front door. However, the site slopes more than three feet from the front of this building, which is 108 feet and six inches long from front to back. And so that would suggest at the back of the building, you might have a floor that's four feet above grade. And so the dimensions that are given for the height at the rear of the building on the elevations without giving a datum to the existing grade really do not tell us how tall that building appears to be from the outside. From a design perspective, um, Mr. Morris suggested that you know previous applications might have been the everywhere track house. I would suggest this remains the everywhere track house. It's a frenetic mishmash of architectural styles and forms. There is nothing in the volume, roof line, building situation, street orientation, or detailing that are relevant to the 18th and 19th century, which is a period of historical significance of the district. 
the four homes at the corner of Barrett's Mill and Lowell and three or four other uh, homes that are within uh, three or four lots in either direction, all are significant architecturally within the 18th and 19th century. This really has no, this proposed application has no bearing on any kind of architectural form or detailing, windows, fenestration, light format that is relevant to that period. Um, the, uh, the planting that is shown on the planting plan, um, it is uh, it, it will call attention to this lot instead of hiding the house by jumping forward of the line of mature trees that currently defines the space of the front of the Theophilus Mason house at 625 by putting new contemporary planting to the historic house side of that line of trees, you simply draw attention to the fact that someone is trying to hide something <laughs> behind that. It does not do anything to lessen the appearance of the side long elevation of this home from the intersection of Lowell and Barrett's Mill. And I pointed out on previous applications, the most significant view of this home will be traveling southbound on Lowell Road when you are stopped at the light where you have a clear view across the front of 625, the historic home, and you will see the backdrop of the long elevation of this proposed home. Uh, the planting which has been proposed also, uh, it interferes with the critical root zone of the existing trees, this line of maples. If um, anyone cares to look, I submitted a, a drawing that shows a graphic indication of the critical root zones of these existing trees per the uh, tree preservation bylaw of the town of Concord. There is a vague note on the site plan that suggests there is a tree protection zone, but there's no indication of where that is demarcated. And the proposed fencing does not even meet the guidelines of our town tree preservation bylaw. There's no mitigation proposed to lessen the impact on the trees of the drive, which uh, pushes far back into the site to get to the two car garage and comes through the critical root zones of all of those mature trees on the applicant's side of that line of trees uh, next to the historic house. Um, so, you know, I'd like to open it up to other people to speak, but there's just, numerous ways again and again on so many fronts where this new application doesn't do anything beyond the previous applications to provide a historically appropriate, appropriately sized and scaled construction for this important part of our town. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Brooke. Uh, Mr. Uh, Hugh McCrory. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Thanks. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've waited patiently here for a while, and I really appreciate the uh, the work that the committee do, and uh, also the applicants uh, who you know who follow this process. Um, uh, my wife and I uh, are longtime residents of Concord. Uh, we walk, run, cycle, and drive past Hillworth Corner every day. Um, and I, I'm speaking in opposition to the application in its current form at, at the, for this development. Uh, I'm still shocked at the size of the house uh, that's being proposed at 1615 or 615 Lowell uh, Road, right, right beside this very historic part of, of our town. Uh, the I, I noticed uh, in uh, Mr. I think it was Fuscombe's uh, presentation that uh, he just uh, he just displayed um, using SketchUp uh, the 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 uh, aspect from Lowell Road, which you know, which is a narrow aspect. But reality is the, the view that most uh, of our residents and visitors will see is coming uh, southward, either from Lowell Road or uh, coming along the north facing side uh, if you're coming from Barrettsville Road. Um, I'm looking at Google Maps here and uh, you know it, it's, a clear, it's a clear view. Uh, when I looked at these plans, the house, the length of the house is over 100 feet. Uh, you know, Sure, the uh, the front side that faces Lowell Road is, is narrower, but the other side is 100 um, feet. And I'm not as uh, probably um, uh, I'm not a professional 
uh, maybe like some of the other callers on 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 this uh, discussion. But you know, the design does not fit into my um, layman's view of what what I see as historic. So uh, I'll try to be brief. So the size of the structure, uh, especially the north north facing side, the length of the house, uh, <clears throat> uh, the design and structure. I've mentioned that. Uh, garages, I thought this was already denied uh, a long time ago, but so it seems to be in the current plan. Uh, I have a question which can, doesn't have to be answered right now, but uh, I think uh, Ms. Uh, Whiting Cash also alluded to it. Uh, are the deciduous trees on the north uh, facing side of the lot? Um, you know, again, the SketchUp uh, showed a very narrow path with, along the house. Uh, I, I'd be concerned uh, that those trees would be taken down and replaced with more modern and uh, very, very, very uh, uh, alien plant plants to the area. Um, yeah, my, my, uh, <clears throat> I, I would just appeal to the um, uh, to the committee to uh, very carefully deliberate on this, which I I, I, I believe you will. Um, I, I just hope uh, that we don't start um, squeezing uh, very large houses into small lots in the town of Concord. Um, there isn't another place that I know of in Massachusetts like Concord. Uh, I've been here 20 years. I was born in New York, even though my accent doesn't uh, belies, belies that. But uh, I just hope you uh, consider it. I, and by to find to finally to say, I, I'm not against development or or building of, of houses. You know, we, we all need to, uh, places to live. Uh, what I would I'm opposing is the size of uh, of this application. And um, it'd be great if the developer could follow the guidelines uh, presented. So thank you very much. And that's it. Thanks, thanks very much, uh, Mr. Curry. Uh, the next uh, uh, hand I have is Nancy Nelson, and after that will be Jeff Ross. I just um, want to give a little bit of help. Louise, um, I'm could sorry. I just, sorry, could I just get Hugh? Could I get your address, please, for the record? Yes. Yeah, sorry, I should have said that at the start. Uh, 59 Lee Drive uh, in Concord. I live essentially off Barrett's Miller Road. Thank you very much. 59 Lee Drive. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, go ahead, Nancy. <laughs> okay. Um, Nancy Nelson, 1695 Lowell Road. I'm involved in the town in many different ways, but um, in the interest of brevity, I would just like to say, um, Ms. Whiting Cash said virtually everything I have thought and could not think how to put in a concise form. So I will endorse what she said and what others have said about the inappropriateness of the size and massing of this structure on this um, oddly shaped lot. Um, particularly, um, I think the proof of the objections is with the, um, the graphic that was shown of the house. And it seemed to be, to me, to be much more imposing than it should or need be. And thank you very much for the opportunity to comment tonight. And thanks to the HDC. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Nancy. The next uh, uh, person up is Jeff Ross, followed by the Van der Bassens. Mr. Ross? Yes, hi, sorry, this is- Miss Ross, Miss yes. Ross. Miss <laughs> Ross on this occasion. Um, thank you very much to the HDC and all the work that you do. Um, I would just like to say firstly, actually, and this is not, um, I hope this doesn't come off badly, but I think that all of us, all the public comments should actually be allowed to go for as long as we feel we have to do, because this is the only place that we have to voice our concerns. Um, we do not have any other outlet in the town to voice our concerns against this project uh, um, other than through letters and through public comment at the HDC. Um, so with that said, I will try and be brief, but I just wanted that to be noted. Um, I also wanted to note that um, the renderings are not to scale, perhaps Anne could confirm that, but that was confirmed by Marsha at the planning division. Um, so I just wanted that for the record as well. Um, and then I would like to speak actually, if it's all right with everybody, to discuss the interior of the house and not the exterior. And just say that um, the interior really translates to the exterior issues in my opinion, 
um, studying the interior strongly suggests that Mr. Bushnell and his team had a square footage number in mind. On this occasion, it's 3,900 square feet. Um, also a five bedroom, four, part, four bath configuration. The front study technically being a bedroom with an ensuite full bathroom. These numbers are, typ are typical for developers and real estate agents and in a generic for profit business model. Um, however, what which I think is obviously very unfortunate that that is the basis um, here in our beautiful historic district. Um, however, when you look at the interior of the house, there are large areas of wasted space, space for the sake of space to get to the 3,900 square feet number. Um, there are three eating areas in the house, a large dining room off the kitchen, a large eat-in kitchen, and another large additional eating area off the kitchen. There are corridors, entryway, <coughs> cupboards at every turn. There's a large open landing upstairs on the second floor. The primary bedroom is on the ground floor is 32 feet long and 16. I couldn't quite tell from the um, from the plans, but it looks like it's 16 or 17 feet wide. And yet an additional structure had to be added to the back of the house for an ensuite bathroom. So I will repeat 32 feet by 16 or seven feet wide for a bedroom. All of the interior space in turn adds to the overall footprint of the house, scale, volume, et cetera. The front attic space and um, the roofing at the front, again, seems superfluous to me um, for a home. It adds volume, size and massing unnecessarily. Um, sorry, let me just gather my thoughts here. Mr. Bushnell and his team have not considered with this application any of the prior HDC recommendations and determinations with this new application. From the inside out, it is about size and the generic for profit business model. I believe we have a situation here that starts with an inflated land price with Archstone builders. It continues with an unimaginative and typical for profit developer business model and it ends with yet another permanent and irreversible McMansion being built in an area of outstanding natural beauty and historic significance. I do believe that some of those items could be adjusted for a more positive impact on the Barrett's Farm Historic District. And I would like to also state that half a mile down the road, on Barnes Hill Road, actually on the corner of Estabrook Road, a one bedroom, three and a half bath barn home, square footage of 2355 square feet, sold on March 2021 for $2.1 million. Then additional work was done to the structure and renovations done, so more money was spent and added. So I do not believe that in this neighborhood, in this district, in Concord, in this beautiful historic district, that a smaller footprint, smaller square footage, a well thought through and designed home would not bring profit to a developer and to um, Mr. Bushnell if he chooses to go down that route which he hasn't shown to have any interest in doing to date. Um, I believe for now that is, sorry, one last thing. I am deeply offended by the application that Mr. Bushnell and his di design team and the architect Elise Stone have submitted um, with this application and prior applications actually. They are, very sloppy, they do not provide all the information that is needed by the HDC to consider, vet, review and an application. 
And as an experienced developer and an experienced architect, I really do think that is a basic standard that they could meet. And I also think that no narrative being included really does not help because it doesn't tell us what Mr. Bushnell actually wants to achieve and what he's trying to do with this lot, other than what we can decipher from how little he puts into his applications. And finally, one a butter is incorrect. We live in this district and there is more than one a butter um, to this property. So Mr. Bushnell should recognize that fact. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Uh, Ross, can I get your name and address for the record? Yes, Fiona Fitzgerald, 150 Barrett's Mill Road. <clears throat> Thanks very much, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Uh, the next uh, uh, up is uh, 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 Defender Vasums, and that will be followed by uh, John and Ruth Ann Ego. Okay. Thank you, Louis. Um, uh, I'm Paul von Avonsum, 597 Lowell Road, Market. Um, I'll keep it reasonably short. I believe that uh, we had previous speakers. Uh, explain uh, in a good way as to what we are trying to oppose and i'm obviously opposed to this uh, this development um it is clear that uh, the lot for the size and the way it is situated in the location uh, does not allow a huge house to be built there and we have been very explicit and the hdc commission has been very quite good explicit in that as well, although we are now faced again by uh, Mr. Bushwell and his friends uh, in under the guise also of a lawsuit that he's pressing his cause and doesn't seem to listen ever. Um, the setback, in my opinion, of, on the lower road side, the setback should be at least a setback similar to the house at 625 Lowell Road on the corner, which is a historic house on Hilvers Quarter. And this house should not protrude in front of it in any way, shape or form. Um, secondly, I think that this very narrow lot uh, does not warrant a large house and a garage. And we have uh, explained that in many cases before for the past year and a half almost. And uh, Mr. Bushnell doesn't seem to be a very good listener or willing to listen to anybody. Uh, so after uh, many meetings on this topic, I believe that uh, any house to be built there, and I'm not against building any house there, uh, it should be of a decent size, a lot smaller than what the present proposal is, uh, maybe somewhere in the 2,500 square feet range, perhaps. Uh, without garage and situated on the lot so it doesn't detract from the, any of the corner houses and specifically not the one next door on 625. And that's in order to preserve the views of anybody passing through Concord and through Hilda's corner so they have a good vision of the historic houses on that corner. So I'll leave it to that and I thank the HTC uh, people for their duly respected uh, pressure in order to uh, spend the time on this for many times now. And I hope that we can come to a conclusion and that Middle Bush will, will start listening finally. So thank you very much and good luck. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Mr. Pendervas. And the, the next speaker will be uh, John and Ruthann Ego, and that will be followed by Elizabeth Gibbs and Mark Carbo. Mr. Ego. Thank you very much, uh, John Igo, and it's 44 Barrett's Mill Road. I live right around the corner from this property. Um, I, first off, I'd like to say that all the technical justification for denying this application, both in tonight's meeting and previously, yeah, in one. previous meetings, okay. still stand. I don't. I have not seen any change. Uh, many people have commented on the increase in size, 
uh, and pretty much just a, a position of um, ignoring the great guidelines provided by the Historic District Commission. And, and I'd like to compliment uh, the Historic District Commission on their efforts. They've been very patient with this application and or continuing series of applications and have been very professional. I bought my house approximately three years ago in the Historic District, and I've had to go before the HDC several times to seek permission. The HDC has never blatantly given me direction. They've always given me good guidance, good recommendations and suggestions. And by the way, the HDC has not always agreed with what I wanted to do. And uh, I took that under advisement because when I bought my home, I knew it was in the historic district and I knew I would have to live by the guidance of the town's uh, historical um, nature. I, I believe the uh, current owner of this lot and the potential new owner of this lot also are moving forward with their decision, understanding that they're supposed to live within those guidelines. But there's a, a blatant attempt here to circumvent those guidelines, to put pressure on the HDC to change its previous decisions, to use legal means in order to overcome what the rest of the citizens of Concord have to live with. And I can go out and hire a lawyer too. So this could set a very bad precedent if this gets approved. Uh, it could set a precedent that changes the way people think about the historic nature of the town. I want to take issue with a couple of things that were brought up in this meeting. One is a statement was made that when you walk by this property and you're on Barrett's Mill Road that you won't even notice it. I do that walk every morning. I do it in the evening as well. You'll definitely notice this building. It will be an imposing structure. It's not just people stopping at the light, getting a glimpse over their shoulder. You're going to know there's a big building over on that lot. And I, and I think it's important that we consider that. Um, the second thing is, and I think this was mentioned in the prior uh, discussion, but the rendering by the landscape uh, fellow, I just do not think was realistic. Uh, I'm not an architect, I'm not a landscape designer, but I walk to these properties every day and that, that rendering just was not, not accurate. And I think it was designed in a way that presented the best alternative to a very bad situation. Um, I think that, you know, we're faced with some very, very difficult things in this town as we go through growth. The community has always said on these applications, the multiple times that, that this particular contractor has come forward, that they're not opposed to developing a lot. But those developments should be in conformance with the rules that we ask every other resident in the town to follow. Um, I encourage the new members to study carefully the, the previous discussions and to talk with many of the community members that are here to find out why there's so much concern about this and the efforts of the HDC in the past that have tried to guide the application to a successful conclusion. And I thank you for your time. Lewis, you're on mute, I think. Uh, the next speaker will, will be, uh, I have Elizabeth Gibbs first and then Mark Carbo. but if you want to go ahead, as you already have the, the microphone on, and if Elizabeth doesn't mind. No, please, okay, I wasn't able to hear you. Please, Elizabeth, go ahead, I'll wait. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Um, Elizabeth Gibbs, uh, my husband Robert and I live on 12 Elm Street, um, which as you know, is also part of the historic neighborhood in Concord. Um, we are also a very visible house to those who visit the town of Concord. And as we know, most of those visitors come because of the historical nature of our town. Um, I think it, I just wanted to note that we also have a family home on the Cape, which is also in a historic district. And I only mention that because having exposure to living in two historical neighborhoods and two separate towns, we appreciate the important role that a historical committee has in matters such as, as this. Um, it's critical to present preserving the character 
of such towns. And that's really just what differentiates these important towns. Um, some of you might be familiar with the overdevelopment of the Cape, particularly in recent years. And I just want to say that I can speak from personal experience to homes that are being squeezed into lots that are just too small for the properties that are being built on them, um, which many have raised concerned about, concerns about in this situation. Um, squeezing a home of inappropriate scale onto a lot that is being built on just doesn't lead to the aesthetic inconsistency of the neighborhood, but also just a number of other issues. Um, some might think are just, you know, neighborly inconveniences, but having lived it, 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 it's a real concern that does affect the town, such as parking challenges, leading to traffic, landscaping issues, which others have mentioned, um, the sheer noise that carries from house to house when they are that close together on lots where homes really truly aren't supposed to be that close together in such as a neighborhood as this. Um, many have also expressed concerns uh, that we're raising tonight as well. And I just kind of wanted to reiterate what another speaker mentioned tonight, which is just that it would be very disappointing to see this passed as a result of being strong-armed through a legal action. And um, I just want to thank the Circle Committee for uh, all that it's doing too. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Ms. Gibbs. Uh, Mark uh, Carbo. Thank you, and thank and you. This one would be because you're <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, good to go. Good to go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you all for your service. I'm Mark Carbo. Uh, we live at 325 Main Street and have undertaken the careful restoration of the Captain Samuel Jones ho house that you often drive by. I'm sure. Um, I'd like to underscore two principles in, in just a few comments. One is around consistency and one is around efficacy of the HDC and how we maintain that. Uh, I think to underscore a point that's been made, we as owners of historic properties and buildings in historic districts, I think we take on this stewardship to protect our community's heritage. And, and we do that knowingly, we do that willingly. Um, we do that expecting some economic burden and it's known up front. It's not really a mystery. Um, I think in our restoration, we had several iterations with the HDC. There was a very healthy give and take in terms of what was appropriate. There were site visits by the HDC, much like I understand has occurred with this application. Um, and I, I feel like in an infinitely more complex restoration, uh, I found your approach to be very constructive and consistently balanced. Um, I listened to the economic arguments tonight for the builder, and I appreciate that the builder needs to get the math to work. And I suspect uh, that square footage makes that math easier to work. But you know, this new proposal is yet for even more square footage. And um, it's not clear to me, sort of as a community, how should we factor in what this reasonable obligation is to retain the historic character of Hildreth Corner. But Again, these were issues that were known before the property was considered for development. It isn't normal math. And in my view, the community does not mean for it to be normal math. Um, I think there's many, many Concordians who are proud to do their part to retain the character of these historic districts. Um, so I, I just feel like it's a dangerous precedent and a slippery slope if we have homeowners and developers playing by different rules. And, and I, I want us to consider how do we keep our HDC efficacious so that we can continue to protect the character of our town. So thank you for your attention and your, your service. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Carbo. Uh, the next one will be uh, Kate Crozier. That's what I see the, and the next one will be Mike Russ after that. Hello, um, my name is Kelly Crozier. I live at 108 Barrett's Mill Road. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak uh, in support of um, the HTC and the community of citizens that shared um, their appreciation for the HTC's work and attention in reviewing this proposal, which has gone on for some time. I support much of what 
the former speakers, um, Ms. Fitzgerald and um, many of my um, other neighbors have said, but I wanna highlight that in my opinion, the current plan is clearly not in keeping with the guidelines that have been set forth. Um, the inclusion again of a two car garage, the incongruent styles of the front building with the barn-like addition on the back. It, it honestly doesn't scale the project back, but it increases it to nearly 4,000 square feet. We're really only 100 square feet from 4,000 square feet. Um, the prior reviews and the, and the denials by the HDC specifically calling out the need for a smaller home without the two-car garage have not been heeded. Um, and I feel as though we've found ourselves at a critical moment where the desires of a neighborhood to uphold and enhance the charm and historic nature of Hildreth Corner and the Barrett's Farm District is really in jeopardy. Um, there is an effort that has tried to circumvent you know, a standing community supported process and it is to me quite disappointing. Um, and I, I ask everyone to have some serious reflection on how the town of Concord can further educate builders, developers, property owners on the expectations and responsibilities and stewardship within historic districts. Like many of my neighbors have expressed, um, this property was bought from Archstone in a historic district. Archstone had also um, previously built on two private parcels in the neighborhood. Um, there is a certain sense of education that had to have been done through that process. And it's unfortunate if um, the current applicant had not gleaned much from those um, reviews. So the continued attempts um, to erode the standards and guidelines of the HDC by legal avenues is of great concern to me and many of my neighbors. And I respectfully ask that the HDC deny the current application. Um, it really is disappointing that we are at this juncture, but I certainly hope that we can find a resolution soon. Thank you to all the commissioners for uh, your work and patience in this matter. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Crozier. Uh, the next one will be Mark Russ. Yeah, and thank that you, will thank be followed you. by Richard and Eric Santoro. Go ahead, Mr. Russ, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Great job uh, moderating. Uh, Mark Russ, uh, my wife Mara and I live with our three kids at 20 Authors Road uh, in Concord. I'd like to add our support and agreement with the sum total of opposition so uh, eloquently articulated and stated tonight uh, towards the latest plans as proposed for 615 Lowell. From what we can discern and understand, as, as said, the developer again proposes a structure uh, that is as large in terms of building volume as what was denied multiple times by the HDC, uh, despite clear back feedback over, over multiple meetings. Uh, the key concerns, as we've heard, do not seem to be addressed, and I want to make sure our voice is added to that uh, opposition regarding that and that community opposition. We've already uh, heard the HDC deny multiple attempts, multiple proposals from 3,400 to 3,900 square feet. Um, you can tilt, turn, squint, you know, any any way you want at it. Uh, my kids try that sometimes uh, with, with me. And, you know, when the fact of the matter is when you, when you look at it in the size, it doesn't appear to support uh, based on the expertise uh, that we've heard tonight from both community and HDC members, the proposal as stands. So, Despite that clear feedback, uh, I'm not sure how a proposal like this could proceed. It's not my area of expertise, that's yours. Uh, but from a process perspective, um, all I can say from uh, going back to 2021, I think it is, is the first time we were, we were here talking about this. The HDC has evaluated fairly and objectively all of the proposals fairly and consistently with its guidelines. Uh, my understanding is there's been eight meetings, two site visits. Uh, that's a lot of education and, and information to, uh, to the developer and their team. Despite that repeated encouragement to submit an application that's smaller uh, and without a garage, it's not happened. Therefore, it's not clear to me how this property as currently proposed can happen. Uh, thank you so much for all you each do. Thanks very much, Mr. Ross, uh, Richard, and Erica Santoro. 
Hi, Erica Santoro, 625 Lowell Road. Um, so there have been eight, the eight meetings that Mr. Russ just mentioned and two site visits over one and a half year period dedicated to discussing the future of the development of this lot. I believe that there's been more discussion about this application than there has been about any other application brought before the HDC. I think there are two reasons for this. The first is because of the historical significance and the, uh, uh, of the area and the importance of preserving the agrarian landscape here. And the second is because Mr. Bushnell has been unwilling to make the changes that the committee has said they would require in order to approve the building plan. It is within the purview of the HDC and in accordance with its guidelines and its charge to determine what can be added or changed in these historic districts to protect them. We have watched this committee attempt to guide Mr. Bushnell and work with him. I think that his repeated proposals, which do not address the criteria set forth by this committee for development on this lot, are disrespectful to the people and processes that work to protect the special setting and historic significance that many of us who live here appreciate. As we discuss the future of this lot, we can consider whether anything has changed since the last application was again unanimously denied. The community support for this committee and its mission has not changed. Concordian's interest in ensuring the appropriateness of the development here and also the fairness of the process has not changed. And Mr. Bushnell's proposal has not changed in the way deemed necessary by this committee in order to be appropriate. I don't know how the HDC can say this any clearer than they have numerous times before. Make the building footprint and volume smaller and the long asphalt driveway and two car garage are inappropriate for the building area and dimensions of this lot in this historic district. The attorney tonight mentioned something about trying to push back the garage as displayed in an earlier meeting the and spoken to tonight as well, the entire driveway and garage and the large two-story massing in the back of this current proposal will be seen from the historic corner. The entire building will be seen from Barrett's Mill Road. Uh, as someone said in a previous meeting, the goal should not be an attempt to hide this building in this historic corner. The goal should be trying to build something that's appropriate for the lot size. The driveway would still kill those mature trees. This committee has already clearly stated that there is no place that they see a garage as appropriate on this lot. We wholeheartedly hope that the HDC remains united and consistent with the message here. The developer must present a plan for a smaller building and remove the long driveway and two car garage. And I, I, I would also like to just mention one thing about precedent, which I know a couple of other community members have said tonight already, but Artstone Builders had owned this land for 10, 10 years and decided not to submit an application to build here. I presume it was because when they subdivided the land, they created a narrow lot with a limited buildable frontage and having experience with the HDC, they knew there would be limitations in what they could build. They've instead negotiated with Mr. Bushnell for him to purchase the land contingent on getting the approval from the HDC for what he wants to build. Mr. Bushnell has been reminded time and time again about, about what the committee would need him to present in order to approve his application. To me, there are two obvious solutions to this. One is he could build on a different lot, lot one, is, one that is not designated in the historic district, or two, he could present an application that meets the requirements set forth by this committee. But instead he has chosen to pressure and gaslight his way to push through a plan that has already been deemed inappropriate multiple times. If this were to pass now, it would set a dangerous precedent that this is the way to overcome the protections of the HDC at the clear detriment to the residents of Concord and our important historic districts. Going back to the very first meeting in August, 2021, where discussions about this lot took place, the HDC suggested a smaller footprint would be necessary here. The builders have known what they need to do to build here. They just will not accept it. Those of us who live in the historic district must follow the directions by this committee and we do so because we respect this independent committee and support its charge of protecting these important districts. Once something is built here, it will not be unbuilt and it will change the landscape forever. 
The 3D rendering shown tonight is misleading and does not show the perspective from the historic corner. Thank you for the time here and thank you to this committee for the work that you do to protect the history, scenery and architecture for both those who live here and those who appreciate and understand the important character of our town. Thank you. Thanks very much, Amy Santoro. Um, and Mr. Page. Thank you so much. Um, my name is William Page and I live at uh, 702 Lowell Road. And my wife and I are stewards of the Charles Flint House. And the uh, Flint House is one of the last half houses remaining in the United States. Um, despite being just outside the historic district on Lowell Road, uh, we have voluntarily signed a conservation restriction on our property. And we've lived in the Flint House um, as stewards for over 22 years. And what's interesting about a half house is it was built as one could afford. So if you picture it from the other side of uh, Lowell Road, it, it's 90 degrees on one side with the roof off to the right. And it would fit actually quite nicely in this property at 615 uh, Lowell Road, a half house. Um, but our house might look quite out of place on a cul-de-sac in a gated community where the applicant's rendering would be very common, a place where square footage equals return on investment with four car garages and all of that, that's a really far cry from a half house. So I'd like to commend and thank the HDC for all your work over the past several meetings dedicated to this applicant. Thank you for your stewardship and your governance in upholding the objectives of the HDC. Thank you for honoring the unparalleled heritage of the town of Car Concord. And the guidelines for the HDC are clear yet they are open to different interpretations and they've been exploited in the past. And the HDC has slipped in the past. A developer took advantage of an open parcel down Lowell Road where a citizen was in the midst restoring an antique home. The developer claimed it was open space, therefore it would be developed. What resulted was a house sited well above the antique, it overwhelms the antique, all in the name of profit for the developer Archstone. And he really didn't give a damn when he was developing the property went in front of the HDC. So we're all well aware this application is yet another extremely aggressive example of profit at all costs with utter lack of care for our concerns or the HDC guidelines. Tonight's also a pure threat from Mr. Bushnell's lawyer, approve the application or litigation will continue. So please stand for appropriate development for Concord and uphold the guidelines you represented as HDC members. Please support the concerns of Concordians and not profit at all costs. We have a really unique town. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Page. Uh, the next one is Bernadette. Um, Hi, um, I'm Bernadette and my husband is Michael Feeney, and we live at 616 Lowell Road. And I, you know, want to, I echo every, all the neighbors of everything that's been said. Um, I want to thank the HDC also for all of they, all that, that you have done and that you do. Um, and as a resident of 616 Lowell Road and as a community member inspired by the advocacy of the HDC um, and who have spearheaded multiple to this point successful efforts to protect Hildreth Corner and Concord. Um, I am concerned about Archstone's behavior and what it will mean for Concord. Um, as was just mentioned, they've already set what seems like a precedent to do it again what they did down Lowell Road. They'd like to do it again across the street from where I, we live. And um, as was said earlier too, I think it's a really slippery slope. I feel like they're bullying HDC and us. And, and I think that, um, I don't know, I think it's frightening. Um, so I'm, supporting the HDC to and asking them to please deny the request for Archstone's proposal. Um, Concord's wealth of landmarks and aesthetic beauty with what our town represents 
to its residents and to its tourists. It welcomes the claims that Archstone is making um, anyway, I, I just will ask you to please deny Archstone's proposal. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Ms. Finney. Um, I don't see any uh, additional requests for public comments, so I'm going to ask uh, in this order, Mr. Silverstein, uh, Mr. Fusco, and uh, the architect, Lisa Stone, uh, to uh, provide any explanation or any additional comments about uh, what uh, has been said. And again, this part, I don't think it's going to be a, a give and take uh, other than for points of information. So if you could uh, uh, have your comments as concise as possible. If you want to go ahead, Mr. Silverstein. Thank you, yes. I think it's quite clear uh, what the outcome of this vote is going to be. So I'm not going to belabor um, many points about our application. Uh, but I do think that um, based upon the many criticisms and slurs against both my client and Elise Stone, who is a top-notch architect, one of the best I've worked with, well-respected in the town, uh, I think I owe it to them to set a few points straight for the record. Uh, both members of the commission and many members of the public have criticized my client for submitting an application that did not substantially reduce the size of the house or eliminate the two car garage. I want to be really clear, when we were approached by town council to submit uh, to ask if we'd be willing to submit a new application. The first thing we said, and we said this in meetings with staff as well, and I understand it was conveyed, though I was not present for the board's executive, the commission's executive session, but I understand it was conveyed to you. We said, we're happy to work with the commission and its staff in any way we can, but it's simply not economically viable to have a house under 3,500 square feet and without a two car garage. We were very clear about that. And we were encouraged to submit a new application to work with staff, which we did in good faith, applying all of the feedback that we were given from staff. I asked if a member of the commission would be willing to uh, participate in this process. We were told that would not happen. So all we had was input from staff. And input from staff and town council was that we should submit a new application that uh, worked within the feedback that we were given. And that's what we've done. The commission's not obligated to approve this application. It clearly is not gonna do so, but it is very disturbing that members of the commission and members of the public would suggest that we've not been acting in good faith by submitting an application that we were very clear when we were first approached about trying to resolve this is the size that we were gonna need. And the only reason that the square footage of the house increased was because of the way that the layout uh, and the functionality requires additional hallways because of the way we were told we should lay out the house. So the commission doesn't have to approve this project and clearly it's not going to, but I certainly do take exception on behalf of my client and Ms. Stone when it's suggested that they've not been acting in good faith or in accordance with input that we've received. Because we were crystal clear up front, and this has clearly been a, a waste of the abutters' times and the commissioners' times and certain my clients' time and money. When we started this conversation many months ago, we were crystal clear about that. And somewhere there has been a miscommunication because all of this could have been avoided, this expense and this time. Uh, and perhaps there's not been good faith, but it's certainly not on the part of our my client. <laughs> Somebody's phone, it's on. <laughs> it could be muted, please. And that's all I have, Mr. Chair. I don't know if Ms. Stone or um, Mr. Fusco wish to say anything further. 
Well, uh, thanks very much for your comments. Um, I think that uh, in the absence of any additional public comments, and I haven't heard uh, the many uh, perspectives uh, about this project, then uh, um, I'll ask uh, the members of the commission whether they have any other comments or whether Mr. Macarius, which obviously has a comment, <laughs> wants to add something to the discussion. I also will have uh, Paul Ware uh, to um, make additional comments. And if anybody wants to make comments, please say it now so we can plan the time. <laughs> Mr. Macarius, go ahead, please. Um, Mr. Chair, I, I certainly would defer to, to uh, Mr. Ware first, but I actually see that uh, Mr. Fusco has his hand up. So you may want to take that comment first and then um, I'm happy to speak before or after Mr. Ware. Yeah, that, we'll do that. Thank you so very much. Uh, Mr. Fusco, if you want to go ahead and make your comments. Um, I just wanted to comment that there was a few references that the renderings were not to scale or purposely not to scale. Um, I was brought onto this project just to build the model. Um, I have no background in any of what's going on with, with any of this. Um, it is 100% to scale. There is no deception um, intended on any of this. Um, so I just want to put that out there because that's completely false. Uh, thanks very much, Mr. Fusco. Uh, so, Emina, you want to, Mr. Ware, to speak first, or you want to go ahead and make comments and then Paul? Well, I think it's important just to say a few things just to, before you deliberate. And certainly, if 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 the comments from, as as I mentioned at the outset, if there are questions, legal questions, I'm happy to address them as well. Um, uh, a few things, um, and also just one comment in light of of Mr. Silverstein's comment. Um, just as a reminder, and I, um, I'm mindful that there are new folks on the commission as well, of what the standard is that you're setting. And I, I think it's important to review that here. Um, you or the standard, excuse me, that you're reviewing under. Um, the HTC's ju jurisdiction is over the view from a public way. That is a very important part of your jurisdiction. Um, and it is the limits of your jurisdiction. There is expressly in your enabling legislation a limitation on consideration of interior features. And so I, I just note that, um, that that is not something that is within the HDC's jurisdiction. Um, finally, and I think this has been the issue that has come up the most, uh, Mr. Silverstein alluded to it. Um, I wanna be clear about the, the size issue and our communication on that. Um, our feedback and staff's feedback to council and the applicant was to reiterate what we had heard from the commission and to, to point that out. But it was also to point out what's in the guidelines and in your enabling legislation. And I, I know I've, I've said this before, but I just want to remind the commission before you deliberate that you the HDC's role is a, a somewhat unique one. You don't review... You don't, your jurisdiction is not an ask to review raw size uh, in, in terms of numbers. It is to review size in relation to three factors that I've mentioned. Uh, you, you maybe um, have heard enough times from me, but just uh, for the sake of, of having them here one more time, um, excuse me, just in relation to the area, um, in relation to other structures, and in relation to um, the land, to landscaping on the property itself. Um, so that is how you review size. So when we were giving, uh, when we were, when we approached um, the applicant and suggested that it may be more efficient to try to come up with another proposal, my perspective is that you're reviewing size in relation to those features and in relation to the public view. Um, I cannot speak for members of the public or their concerns or particular commissioners and their concerns, but I would just urge that you keep those factors in mind as you as you uh, finish your deliberation um, and that there while the, while there certainly um, might there was no promise from the applicant uh, to us to reduce size there's also no promise from staff or council that, that that was that any issue that hadn't come up before wouldn't come up again, but 
my my role and my duty to you is to give you the guidance that those are that is how you consider size. You don't consider it purely in in terms of relation to just a lot. That is a matter of zoning. You it's in in respect to those three factors. So with that, that's just just the I wanted to set the the standard um, as much as I could. Uh, thank, thanks very much, Mina. I just want to clarify one aspect that I don't think that Mina is totally correct. Uh, we don't have to respect uh, uh, considerations of zoning. We cannot approve anything that could not be built because of zoning relations. But uh, the enabling legislation and uh, the uh, uh, rules and guidelines and regulations give substantial, uh, substantial leeway uh, to the HTC to determine the historic appropriateness of a structure um, and I can quote uh, particular places, but uh, I appreciate that uh, uh, Mina is uh, uh, providing the, the uh, appropriate uh, structure and objectivity uh, to the process. I would like to ask uh, uh, Paul to make any comments. And well, I will go back to Mina. Before you do, I mean, if you're going to tell me I'm I'm, I'm incorrect about the, the law, I just want to be clear what I said. The uh, it is not that you can't. It, yes, you you obviously are looking at buildings that are buildable as a matter of zoning, and so yes, you may differ from the zoning. My point is sim is simply that your analysis is uh, of size it, with relation to the land area upon which the building or structure is situated, the landscaping and, flat, uh, and planting features and the neighboring sites, buildings or structures. That's all I mean by that. Not to say that you, you, you cannot uh, differ from what might be allowed by zoning, just to be clear. Th thanks for the clarification because uh, it certainly uh, makes the point. Uh, Paul, you have been trying to talk. <laughs> Yeah, I just I, I always think it's unfortunate when um, the discussion uh, ends up sort of pointing the finger at the professional staff, whether the planning board or our own administrative staff. I mean, these are professionals who do their best. They work hard. They support us every week, every month, every day. And um, they do a great job for us. And we are very respectful of that work and the quality of that work. So that's one observation. I don't, I don't want to see them thrown under the bus here, regardless what the developer uh, feels, regardless of the way in which he may feel that he was somehow misled because it's encouraged to present another application. This application has been before the board multiple times, it's been denied multiple times. I've been on both sides of that, depending upon the specific issues. And I, I'm always a little troubled by the focus on the square footage because I don't think that is our purview. At least I don't think it's our only purview. The issue is what, what can be seen from the public way and to what extent is it inconsistent with the historic context in which this building is proposed. And I think reasonable minds can differ on that. And obviously they have differed and the community feels very strongly and I think it's hard for us, uh, and I don't think we should ignore the community's view. They live there every day. Um, they have to live with the project if it's built. So that's a windy way of saying that I'm hopeful that each side will respect uh, both the developer and its council and the good faith with which they approach this problem. And the fact that town staff and this commission uh, may make a vote that is is one that they don't like doesn't mean that this entire process was uh, one which was not carried out in total good faith because I believe it was. Thanks very much, Paul. Thanks very much, Paul. Uh, Dennis, uh, do you want to make a comment? Do make I don't a want to belabor. I don't want to belabor all this. But tonight, all this, but tonight, am I echoing for some reason? Am I echoing for some reason? No. Okay, thanks. Um, I just, I don't want to belabor this process, but uh, tonight we've heard uh, the citizens of Concord uh, compliment the HDC on the work that they do, but we wouldn't do the work we do without the support of the citizens. And we do this on behalf of the citizens of Concord. If this were just a NIMBY problem, where we were only hearing from neighbors, it would be one thing, but we're hearing from what the citizens of Concord think across the board is inappropriate in their community. 
And I think we have to take that seriously in consideration when we look at any of these and any of these projects. So again, I just want to thank all of you who have supported us and have been here and have come with very intelligent comments and helped us through this whole process. Thanks very much, uh, Dennis. I think that we have uh, had a very uh, prolonged and fruitful discussion. Uh, all different uh, perspectives have been heard and all the parties have had an opportunity to address uh, their concerns. So uh, at this point, I would like uh, for the commission uh, to make a motion. As a matter of principle, I will remind that uh, that motion may be a motion to approve, to approve with conditions, to deny or to continue to the application of a uh, 615 uh, low road. Okay. So if I can hear, so that, uh, can that, hear motion. That, uh, that motion. Who are the voting members again? Luis? The voting members in this case are gonna be uh, Kate Schartner, Catherine Mast, Melinda Shumway, Paul Ware, and myself. So I cannot make the motion and remind, uh, I want to remind the people that uh, the motion can be any motion, that that motion can be approved or disapproved. It can be voted in favor or against. I move that we um, continue yeah. to the next meeting. You vote for continuance, okay. Is there a second? Okay. Uh, is, is anybody uh, is a, a, a full member seconding the application, the, the motion to continue? Catherine is uh, okay. So I'm gonna ask uh, uh, Kate uh, whether she would vote in favor of continuing or uh, continue the application, yes or no? Yes. Okay, uh, Catherine? Aye. Melinda? Melinda, you're muted. Aye. We vote in favor of continuing the application. Paul? Um, I don't understand why we're continuing. I don't know if I'm allowed to ask a question, but what, what's the basis for the continuance as opposed to a vote? Well, uh, I, uh, as a, the rules and regulations uh, uh, determine that uh, after the discussion, the, there are four options for the commission. One of them is to continue to approve with conditions, to approve or to deny. And uh, as I cannot make the motion, then I asked the voting members of the commission for a motion. And the motion that I heard was for continuance. Now, if the person who made that motion or the persons who made that motion and seconded it uh, want uh, uh, to uh, withdraw it, uh, that would be an option. Uh, if they uh, want to vote down the option of uh, continuing, that's another option. But uh, this is the way that the rules go, you see. In other words, we can do four things, continue, approve, conditions, or deny. Uh, uh, so I, vote, uh, I vote against, I vote to deny the continuance and to have a vote on the merits tonight. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna make a, a, another roll call to just make sure that we are on the same page. Um, there's a motion to continue the application. Paul Ware has voted against that motion. Melinda, are you voting yes or no uh, to continue the application? No, I, I just, could you explain? I, I'm not getting the continuance thing. I just don't understand what's behind okay. it. I suggested continuing so we could have more time to contemplate, but I can withdraw I, the continuance and we can vote now. Okay, so let, we'll, we'll, hear for, we'll make it for the record that uh, uh, Catherine Schartner has withdrawn the, the motion to continue the application. So at this point, I will ask the commission again, uh, and I will ask for a second, to exercise one of the four options that it has. One of them is to continue the application. The other one is to approve it. The other one is to approve it with conditions. And the other one is to deny it. So I, will, what, I would like to hear a motion about one of those four options. 
I, I move that with respect to the property at 615 Lowell Road and the application for certificate appropriateness, appropriateness that it be denied on the merits. Any seconds? Okay, Melinda is seconded. Okay, so now I'm gonna go alphabetically. Uh, Kate, are you voting uh, in favor of denying the application? Am I voting in favor of denying? Of denying. Are you voting for denied application? Yes, aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. Uh, Catherine. Aye. Melinda. Aye. Paul. Aye. And I am an aye as well. So there have been five votes against the uh, approving the application and no votes for any of the other options. So therefore the application has been denied. I want to thank uh, all the participants for their willingness to participate in this process. I want to thank the people of Concord for the interest they have in uh, pr promoting uh, the historic values of the town. And I want to uh, thank the applicants for their resilience and tenacity in uh, uh, trying to uh, make a structure that uh, uh, it's consistent with uh, what uh, are their values and their uh, perceptions. So uh, if there are no other issues rely, uh, in this matter, I'm gonna go through other business. And the first other business is a certificate amendment for 34 Main Street. Certificate of approval 2247. Uh, do we have information on this, uh, Anne? Sorry, could um, maybe Haley could speak to this since she received it. So, yes, so the applicant for uh, that is Crosby Design and they are here. Okay, uh, go ahead. <laughs> Don't see anybody. Hi, can you not see me? Crosby Design, hi, how are you? You then identify Hi, yourself. <laughs> um, good. I think it was the um, the uh, the small sign, and I think it had gone through uh, as uh, eighteen and a half inch. Eighteen and a half by eighteen and a half by eighteen and a half for um, what was it? Academy mortgage. Academy mortgage. And um, I guess it was sent something back to the office when the uh, building inspector uh, scaled it up. Uh, or must have taken his measurements. It came out at 18 by 18. So it's officially the only thing that's ever been smaller than you've looked for. But um, it was uh, it was passed at 18 and a half by 18 and a half. And we ended up making the sign at 18 by 18 because we had taken a blue pinstripe off of the artwork based on the HDC's recommendation. Okay, so and we have a difference of half an inch. <laughs> So, so yeah, well, <clears throat> yeah, if you add it all up, it's a little bit more than that, but it's not very big. No, it's a, it was the pinstripe that was on the blue sign that somebody had suggested it would look better without it. So um, we had changed the proposal that night and then it was agreed that it would just be a white background. So, it, you know, I thought it was just a paperwork thing, but then uh, Maureen had said we're on the HDC for it, so. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna try to be uh, efficient. <laughs> This matter, are any members of the commission that would like to make comments on this change in size? And if there are none, are any members of the commission that uh, are uh, willing to approve this administratively? Wait, do we have any visuals here? No? The, the visuals are from the original application, the difference is half an inch. Well, okay. Uh, okay. They were, it was. It was a month ago or, one, or two months ago in the application. So we didn't resubmit. They just said we were on the committee uh, on it again, right? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, there we go. Oh, there you go. So it's the, the sign on the right is the uh, 18 and a half by 18 and a half. But before, uh, both signs had a blue pinstripe that might be the thickness of that. Uh, the, the, the blue part of the A that mm -hmm. went around the border. And somebody had made a comment that it was, you know, it might look a little cleaner if it didn't have the blue stripe. 
So we took the blue stripe off of both. And um, and then the other, this, the, the blade side, it was just a half an inch pinstripe around the outside. So we took it off, but it was a border. So instead of taking it off, we just didn't put it on. So that took a half an inch off of the top and the side and the side and the side. So it's 18 by 18 as we put it up. We didn't even realize that it was smaller, but it was. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Thank you. I just wanted to see the sign. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to uh, ask for a motion to, to uh, approve the certificate amendment of 34 Main Street if there are no objections. I move to amend the certificate for the sign at 34 Main Street. A second? I'll second. Okay, Paul? Aye. Melinda? Aye. Catherine? Aye. Kate? Aye. And I'm an I as well. Thank All right, you. well, thank you very much. All right. So Bye -bye. the next order of business is the election of a chair, vice chair, and secretary for the year 2023. So as I'm the chair, I will leave to all the members of the commission. All members will be voting in this matter um, to make a motion and propose uh, the appropriate the names that uh, they find. <laughs> Louise. Yes. Can you tell us who who are going to be the full members? Who do we have to choose from? Yeah, the full members uh, are going to be. Uh, I'm going to start from the actual full member. So Paul it will be a full member. Mm -hmm. Melinda Shumway is a full member. Mm -hmm. Catherine Mast is a full member. I am a full member, and you will be a full member after the meeting of the select board on. Um, I think that's February 13th or February 11th or something like that, because it, it needs to be formally appointed by the select board. So yes. we cannot elect you tonight, but, uh, but we could postpone the election until you are on the roster and then we could elect you. Hmm. No. Please? Yes. Um, I, I gave some consideration to, uh, to nominations, which we, we had uh, discussed at one point and um, I think we're past the time where uh, we should be doing some kind of election, even on a temporary basis. This could change, um, but uh, I had some thoughts on that and I had hoped and I gathered this is fine that you could stay one more year as chair and considering all that is going on at this point um, and all that you have um, underway, I think it would be great if you would stay another, another year. Again, this is, I call it temporary, but once, uh, uh, once we have Ms. Chartner on board, we can, I think, take a, a more official vote on this. We also have two new members and we have other members who are in, in flux. Mm -hmm. um, I would hope that Melinda might, uh, at least on a temporary basis, maybe for longer, uh, take on the vice chair and that Catherine uh, would, uh, would become the secretary. So those are my suggestions. All right. Uh, If I, if I understand that, I think that, you know, the, there's a, the requirement to elect a chair, vice chair and secretary is not bound to any particular time period. So it can be done any time. Uh, you know, a, a chair can, can uh, resign or uh, et cetera. So the idea of doing it temporarily, it's perfectly appropriate. Um, I'll be happy to stay as chair. And, uh, you know, uh, we have a proposal, which is Melinda and Catherine. And if that's uh, agreeable, then that can be voted. And if not, that also can be changed. <laughs> uh, I think those are good options. I'm, I, I, I'm fine with voting now for all of them, but. Okay. So if we can have a motion to uh, approve uh, the position of chair, vice chair and uh, secretary uh, with the position of uh, secretary taken by Catherine Mass, the position of vice chair taken by Melinda Shumway, the position of chair taken by myself, that would be the motion. 
do the nominees feel okay with this? Do we? That's <laughs> what I heard. <laughs> oh my! Do you arm. agree, Catherine? Arm. <laughs> I suppose <laughs> that would be great. Sure. Hi, this strong arm. Okay. Um, so sorry. Where were we, Luis? We were. We have. We need to have a motion for that slate. I'd like you know would you know Paul is such a good motion maker. I won't. I, I won't. <laughs> well, okay. I will. Uh, am I on mute? Yeah. So I, I will move the slate as articulated um, for for the ensuing year. <laughs> a second. Great. Great. Okay. Great. Yeah, who's seconding? I seconded. Okay. So uh, Kate. Yes or no? Yes. Walton? I. Yes. Dennis? Uh, aye. Catherine? Aye. Henry? <laughs> aye. Melinda? Aye. Paul? Aye. And I'm an I. I'm an I as well. <laughs> So you're voting for yourself. I need a, I need a motion to to adjourn, please. <laughs> Paul, give us something legally and really articulate, okay? Um, <laughs> the, the only thing I can say uh, legally or articulate is it it was a dark and stormy night. The lions were restless. The HCC so I, had completed his motions. I don't know if I can be articulate at this hour, but um, <laughs> agreed. Given. Given the distinguished service of all the members tonight and um, the both the restraint and the wisdom they've shown in making comments about some very topical um, hot potato issues, I move that we adjourn this damn thing. Aye, <laughs> <laughs> aye. I second. Okay, that's good. All in favor, aye. All against, aye. no, okay, good. Thank good night, you so very everyone. much. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Right. Thanks, Elise. Right. Good night, everybody. Uh, Good night. Have a glass of a scotch. <laughs> or two. That's the doctor's orders. <laughs>